Well, good morning, everybody. Today's episode is brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee. If you go to blackriflecoffee.com, what are you going to find? Well, you're going to find everything you could possibly need for your heart's desire when it comes to coffee. How to, you know, not how to, even though I bet you there's a tutorial on there somewhere. Uh, things you can make coffee in, drink coffee out of, a crazy amount of roasts to choose from, subscriptions that you could have those roasts delivered wherever you want to on whatever interval that you want to. What else is on their banner right now? There's the BRCC Shirt Club. Right now there's a collaboration between BRCC and Timothy Kennedy. It looks like a war hippo. Uh, yeah, that, that checks out. That seems like uh, it would be very Tim Kennedy-esque. There is a Liberty Roast that is back for a limited time. And let's see what else is the last thing on this rotating banner. It's this damn Bass Cat Boat giveaway. I don't even know what the hell that means. I, I'm not a fisherman. I like eating fish. It's tasty, but I don't know. Apparently, this boat is a big deal. And you can enter to win a fully rigged and custom wrapped Bass Cat Cougar and a whole lot more. And you can click on all of these things. And if none of that suits your fancy, you can roll through their gear, the apparel, coffee bundles, coffee samplers, just Absolutely go to town, blackriflecoffee.com. My guest today, Mark Brandenburg. He is an active United States Secret Service agent, but has also wrote a novel called Fence Jumper. Mark has worked on the Presidential Protective Division, and he was a supervisor for Vice President uh, for the Vice Presidential Protective Division for Mike Pence for two years. We cover a lot, everything from why he wanted to uh, be an author, what he wrote about, and his life as a Secret Service agent. Episode number 293 with Mark Brandenburg. Enjoy. Okay, I got the red smoke. Gun run, north and south, west of the smoke, west of the smoke. Okay, copy, west of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Where would you like to begin, uh, Mr. Brandenburg? Mr. Brandenburg, uh, I would like to begin. I think the best pl place to begin is maybe uh, just. With, I like to start with my folks and then uh, the family stuff. I mean, I know a lot of times because people don't know who the hell I am. So I know what's on your show. A lot of times you'll start with the kind of bio thing. Sometimes, sometimes, but whatever you guys think is best. I mean, it's up to you, man. I'm a, yeah. So uh, How much be a good way, it'd be a good way for me to ease, ease in. I, this is my second podcast. First one like this. Okay. Um, what was, was your first podcast? It's called Cops and Writers, but it was all done on Zoom. It's by there's a former cop out of Milwaukee. Yeah. This got published back in February, and so there was a way to kind of get my um, feet wet and do that. Yeah. Because this is you know, this is a little out of place. I mean, this is like for me. This is <laughs> yesterday. I was thinking, oh god. And then today, I felt a lot better. Worked out and got all that in. Cause just because it's new. You know the in person you mean no no the in person i prefer yeah uh, I, I think just the whole setup just it's all new to me so you know what it is new i shit. guess well i mean i'm fine i mean for the love of god man you're a secret service agent <laughs> to fucking be okay with stress in your situations <laughs> this is true this is true <laughs> it's like driving the president's fine it's just there's no microphone in there so what yeah. would happen if the person driving the president got into a fender bender like during a motorcade? Yeah, I'm talking about the prezes in the back, like working on something and like like riding. I, I just assume he's always to, back you, there riding on a scroll and then so like slam. In front like, of well, in front of the limo is a spare limo. If you hit the spare limo, no, I mean I I want in my in my fairy tale, we're talking about the president's vehicle hits something. Yeah, well, it happened in Ireland. Remember, <laughs> remember in Ireland, no. it got it got high ended. So in Ireland, um. It was coming out of some, um, was it Ireland? I think it was Ireland. It was coming out of like one of the places, and there was a metal, because a gate comes in, yeah. and it slides on this thing, and it went down. This is the old limos. They weren't as high. Yeah. And it hit it just right. It was like literally like the proton torpedo hits the Death Star, hits the perfect spot, kills the, basically the axle. It goes, it's, it's inoperable. Really? Yes. This happened in- Please tell me the president was in there. He was in there. They were Fuck leaving. yes. And so this is- uh, these are the parade limos, so they were lower to the ground. The new okay. ones wouldn't ever do this. This had to be there. It is. <laughs> Hold on. <There> it is. <laughs> oh, great TMZ. And see, I was a transportation guy. Also, I got a prep. So here, yeah. This is not our shiny moment, but the guys do a great job. And let me show you something. How good the guys react to this. Right there, it hits it. Oh, it's just okay. Now I understand now, what you're saying. So the, the angle. Watch, angle watch up, the guys react. Yeah. These people are all screened. So. They're good, but now you're like, 
you're like shit. Um, it literally just didn't have the clearance to get over the top of that. That was a true yes, high set. These yeah. are the old ones. Now the new ones are much better than this. I'm not, what year does this say it is? Um, this is. And what they'll do is they'll pull uh, we'll the react and they will, they'll pull the uh, these buses and shit in front of it to block off the people across the street. Now, mind you, they're all screened, so th he's really in no danger. I mean, he's yeah. still in the bubble really well. It's just not a great look. I don't know a whole lot about the presidential limo, but I feel like he's probably doing okay in there. Oh, he's fine. And here's what's here's what's funny. How did they get the limo in there? Good question. So at the time, <laughs> at the time, I was doing the transportation advance in Warsaw, Poland. So this is part of the same swing. Yeah. So th those 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 uh, cars were supposed to go to Poland. They were supposed to get on a C seventeen and go to Poland. Um, and we're planning all this. You know, it's a whole European swing. Yeah. Um, Anyway, the uh, so this you know the poll the polls you know working with them is very much Eastern Bloc their kind of mentality yeah. and stuff. And this guy was super stoic. I was working with all week. Of course, the news is out about this, and he looks at me and goes, um, "That's not going to happen." <laughs> when he comes here, I go, "It's not going to happen. We're going to be good." So, uh, needless to say, we went to all the sites. And yeah. we re-examined all the sites to make sure that was not going to be an issue because that's the first and only time that's ever happened, to my knowledge. How'd they get that limo out of there? Another good question. Once again, I was in Poland, and uh, I'm probably guessing, would have been better off backing it, backing it. Well, I don't know if they're real. They would have to would have back. lifted it and probably gotten it on some of flatbed, but that thing's heavy. What president was in there? Uh, that's Obama. So please tell me he is the kind of guy who'd be back there talking shit. Yes, I like think he, real <laughs> good job, dude. Real good job. I, I haven't heard what he said, but <laughs> I, go, I have something to the effect of probably is there a problem, guys? Is there something something kind of understated? Yeah. Would be my, my guess. So. Um, God, as the driver of that, you could see him when he hopped out. He's not living his best life in that moment. No, I mean, you're just, I mean, I can imagine at that point, you're like, you're going through a thousand scenarios like, okay, what do we do next? And actually, what you didn't see in that video is some of the supervisors and guys, like I said, they blocked it off really quickly. So yeah. they reacted to it properly. Um, he was never in danger, but obviously it's not what you want to happen. And then, like I said, the new, the new cars, it's amazing what the engineers have done is that the new cars... Not only larger and heavier and higher up, but they're easier to drive, much easier. The visibility is better. They just really? did, yeah, they did a better job of designing it. Um, what do those things ballpark cost money wise for a presidential limo? Um, I don't know. It's 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 got to be tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. And there's yeah. I don't know what the number is now because I've been off the so I was on the uh, presidential protective division from like 2008 to 2014 during the Obama's administration. Um, and at the time, they were still kind of bringing in the new cars. Um, and uh, so, you know, now I'm sure that there's a lot of differences in things because I've been kind of away from that for a while. I've been in protection yeah. for 15 years, but I have different types of protection. Michael, what? are you able to find? What yeah, 1.6 million. 1. That's 6? actually way cheaper than I thought. Yeah, that's a bargain. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's saying here. That's, uh, this is uh, the Cadillacs. I don't know if this is the new one or the old one. Yeah. Known as the Beast. Yeah, we uh, for the record we don't call it the beast. <laughs> it's just a presidential limo, but it's, that's popularized. I, I was think. gonna say, who calls it the beast then? It's uh, I think I don't know how it got started. I think it got used to get started. It probably was one. I don't, I don't know if we call it that. I know, I mean, maybe that, that was happened a lot. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know if it's just like a popular. Huh. I, maybe at one time we did. I don't. Maybe so, I'm wrong. Maybe. So what did they in that situation overseas? What did they do with? Obama. They pulled the buses up in front. Did they just swap into the second? Yeah. Limo? So they'll have they'll have a backup vehicle. They'll have another limo yeah. uh, available. Uh, and there's and there's contingencies. No matter. I mean, for all kinds of different situations. Uh, because obviously, you know, as you've seen, you may have seen a presidential motorcade. It's yep. super long. I uh, go the other direction. It's like when Air Force One he used to come to or he the fucking plane. Anytime it would come to like San Diego or LAX. Like, uh huh. I had buddies who were working for the Flight Standards District Office, and they're mm -hmm. like, fuck, we're going to have like 30 people deviate from the airspace because they don't read the no-tams, and they yeah. just go, go you know, F-18 chasing, chasing down a Cessna 152. But my theory is it was the same as high-ranking officers. You're better off going in the opposite direction. Yeah. So I've yeah. seen them on TV, but I don't want to be anywhere near that. I don't need to. Yeah. It's just like, I'm get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have that option, but the uh, yeah, I, I, I can't fault you because it's just such a circus. But um, I just, yeah, you just don't want to be around it. Like, no, and also I don't think you're alone in that feeling when if you don't if you don't have to be there for that sort of thing. There's not really a lot of allure of it to me. Yeah. I hosted the uh, Secret Service Cat Team a few times. Yeah, uh, when I was at the East Coast Command, and they were cool. They set up, you know, I did a tour one time with my family, like the traditional tour of the White House at Christmas mm -hmm. time. It was cool to yeah. see everything, yeah. but. 
the allure of I've met enough people in my life. Like it would be mm-hmm. cool. I get like, it'd be interesting, but yeah. you shake somebody's hand. They still like, there's no perfect person out there. They're still fucked up yeah, in their own way. They're, sure. they're going to have their own struggles. And it's like, you know, your guy's job is hard enough. I'm just going to go somewhere else for yeah. the day. I'll well, watch that's it. That's appreciated. Yeah. It's like, I'll go do something else. I mean, <laughs> yeah, let some other, I got other things. Do. That's true. It's like, that's the one thing about uh, doing this job and being around a lot of different protectees, whether it's a president, vice president, even like, DHS secretary. I protected uh, General John Kelly for a while for a short time when he was DHS secretary. Very down to earth. Um, yeah, you meet a lot of people on the job. And yeah, you do find out that it's kind of like even celebrities or stuff. It's kind of the same thing. People have this kind of hero worship. And then the reality is, like you said, yeah. they're just normal people. Really, in many cases, very talented people. Most cases, very talented people, but normal people. And if you do have that hero, where it's a mistake that I've made in my life. That's yeah. where I came to the conclusion I have now. But if you spend enough time around with them, you'll see the tarnishes that most people don't get to yeah. see. Yeah. And you realize, like, okay, we're all we're all human beings. <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting to meet the person that has the perfect life. I know a lot of people think that uh, a certain amount just of, go on Instagram. Everybody's got a perfect life. <laughs> or but like they're like, oh, that guy's got a sweet uh, Bugatti or something. Yeah. I don't know what the hell that is, but. I literally could not pick out a Bugatti if there was 100 cars in front of me. Yeah. But I bet you there are people out there who have a ton of them and are miserable. Yeah. Or no, they think sure. they think they arrive at a certain uh, bank account number and everything's going to yeah. be okay. Yeah. It's not. Well, Everybody it's like, has their struggles. But it's also, it's like, and I found that I've done, the, I think everybody's done that mistake. And I did that, especially as a younger person. I remember when I was a cop, um, I was a cop in Kansas City area, Olathe, Kansas. Um, and I remember... I, I met the Secret Service guys. They were cool. We did the warrants with them, and that's re- that kind of got me into the. I want to try that. Yeah. Um, Why were you doing warrants with Secret Service guys? So the Secret Service. Um, I know they do a lot of counterfeiting. They do counterfeiting, stuff. but they also do financial crimes, and uh, like I, when I started in Chicago, we did like mortgage fraud, all kinds of different types of fraud. The we, Secret Service is involved in mortgage fraud. Yeah. So you know how it got started. Yeah. You know the history at all? I'll give you if no brief. So. I mean, I watched the Nicolas Cage movie, Treasure Hunter, or whatever it is, and he talked a little bit about it. Well, well they were halfway there then. Yeah. So, so in 1860, this is how we got our cool name, too. 1865, what's ironic is Lincoln, before he goes off, he informally signs saying to create the U.S. Secret Service to combat counterfeiting because there's so much counterfeiting after the end of the Civil War. Why did they call it the Secret Service? Because they weren't, because they literally were undercover. So okay. they were called Secret Service operatives. There was no FBI yet. Um, and they would literally go uh, infiltrate these rings in the South a lot of times um, and uncover the counterfeiting going on to try to get some sort of semblance of order uh, with okay. our currency. And so that's where the term Secret Service comes from. And uh, also there's a great book called Freedom's Detective that talks about the time after that I read. I think Cornacki is the author's name, but very interesting. But anyway, by ni- in 1901, McKinley gets shot and killed. Well, the, well, let's not skip over Lincoln getting smoked, too. I mean, well, there was no Secret Service yet. So I was going to say, but that might be a good indicator. That maybe <laughs> that's, like, well, that's, that's exact. Well, who was the other one? There was one. There was Lincoln and. Um, Thank God we have Michael Garfield. Was it Garfield? The who, who's been assassinated? assassinated yeah. yeah. There was another one in the 80s, I think. 1880s. Please tell me I'm right, because I'd feel terrible. I should know this. There has been more than there likely should be. Yeah. James Garfield, oh, yep. William yeah. McKinley. Yeah, McKinley's the next one. Well, see, McKinley, so when, when, Kim, when McKinley got killed, um, they were like, okay, enough with our presidents getting shot and killed. And the only, I feel like that at Lincoln, you could have said that. But we did, there was no secret. I, I agree. They probably should have. At that <laughs> point, I think it would have been wise at that point. One's too many. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't be able to walk up and yeah. point shoot a president. Yeah. Maybe one of the greatest heroes. The hey, they just took out one of the greatest heroes in yeah. our country's history. Maybe we should have guys with guns around them. And he did have some sort of, I think he had one guy that night at Ford's Theater. Who would, he was like a soldier or something. Yeah. Um, who, but you know, they just, it was, there was no real formal protection, which is crazy, but it's true. Uh, so Mc- after McKinley, so the vice president's Teddy Roosevelt. He's the first person we protected. And because they had nowhere else to turn, right? So they go, um, oh, we have some Secret Service agents. Let's get them on it. And so that's how we started protecting presidents. Uh, and I, actually, the first FBI agents they took from the Secret Service pool to create the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'm not sure what that was, the 1920s or yeah. 19- whatever. But um, And it just grew from there. And that's, you know, I always like to go, 
That's how we got our cool name, the U.S. the United States Secret Service, because we actually were a secret service. If it created us now, it'd be some lame ass name like Executive Protection Service. Oh, or it would something be trash. Terrible. It, it would, would be, be just super awful. trash. <laughs> Not the U Triple S. <laughs> uh, so okay, it was Lincoln, Garfield, Garfield, McKinley, McKinley. Kennedy, Kennedy. Yeah, that's and that we were there for that one. Personal thoughts as a Secret Service agent did. He act alone. <laughs> I am not going to get into conspiracy theories. The fuck you're not. What do you <laughs> think we're here for? <laughs> <laughs> we're here to make shit up. No, that was okay. That was. I know you guys get a special brief, and you have to put your like <laughs> retinal scan and thumbprint on it because that was in the Nicolas Cage movie too. There's a presidential yeah. book that's yeah. hidden in the Library of Congress. You know what I'm talking about, Michael? <laughs> sure. National treasure. Yeah, you fuck you. It's <laughs> National Treasure too. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah. So so. The Secret Service way back then was done completely differently than even if you go back to Reagan yeah. and his attempted assassination. A, we were much smaller, very small. It was basically just straight bodyguarding. He's lucky he didn't die on that one. Oh, he's very lucky. He's super lucky. He's the very round that, lucky. The round that hit him bounced off uh, bounced the frame off the, of the door. Yes. Right? Yeah. And this, I think, I believe the one that hit our agent. Was a, was a ricochet as well. Yeah, he, he, there's that crazy picture of him jumped yes. up in the air. Holy yes. shit, man! And he eventually became a uh, like a chief of police outside Chicago as well. But yeah, the uh, uh, yeah, when that happened, and that's it, you watch it now, and you're sitting there going, "How the fuck do you allow this to happen from like, a procedural perspective?" Yeah, because it's like you have completely. M Michael, can you pull up a YouTube of the attempted Reagan assassination? I'd be lo um, I would love yeah, to hear I'm a modern day to debrief. Find it. I would love to hear a modern day debrief on how you guys view that. Yeah, now. it's a. But the, here's the issue: it's like you literally have all kinds of unmagged people there, and they still magged by his uh, magnetic one. Yeah, or it, depending on the situation, or at a magnetic time, a walkthrough. If it's right. a yeah. set up site, now something like that, maybe an impromptu rope line. Yeah, impromptu. You would still you, you would still uh, mag all those people and ensure that they're unarmed. He yeah, how really did he get that fucking close? Well, once again, the the way they operated then is not the same that we operate now. It would it wouldn't happen now. This we wouldn't allow yep. that to happen now. Like because he's an official event. This is not like an impromptu. Fuck yeah, get that wheel gun out, dude. <laughs> the wheel gun. Michael, go to the beginning, and I'm gonna have you freeze frame. Right. Play it a little bit more. Play it a little bit more. Hold on. Uh... Stop it. This dude. Yeah. I'm that, not. Ha I'm not happy with that. Is that, that Metro dude. PD? Yeah, I'm yeah. not happy with that dude at all. <laughs> the one you just ducked out of the way. Oh, the fuck yeah! He, uh, the, so the people who are trained are going directly at the shooter, and he's just like, "Get me the fuck out of here!" <laughs> that, oh, that guy right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so walk me through actually what happened because you guys have to study this in the Secret Service. Yeah, it's been a while. So they're right here. You see, I wish I remembered the names. I I would have studied the names, but you can see the special agent in charge. You see the guy pushing him into the back yep. of the limo. That's a special agent in charge. And That's around his... and pause it, Michael, if you can. Didn't a round hit like the corner of yes. the window, and that's actually what hit right? My understanding is now, once again, I'm not studied up on this in a while, but I think it hit the door frame, is what I remember, because you can see the agent reacting. I, yeah. I think it was. The guy who's jumping got hit too. Yeah. And I, I wish I would remember the names. It's, I'm going like, to kick myself for not looking at this. People can Google it. It's fine. Yeah, they can. I didn't realize that he almost died due to blood loss. Oh, is there, no, yeah. he told him to get to GW. Yeah. Like he said, go to, because he didn't think. Michael, he, you see that? How he's just the guy stuffing the president in the vehicle? Yeah, yeah that's the special yeah. agent in charge. If this was me, I would be like holding Michael like a fucking shield, and right? So, like I would be like holding him yeah. out. <laughs> Up to the shooter. Oh, 100%. I would Sounds run about right. towards the you don't shooter. Take a whole lot of space, Michael. Like, I would go belt collar grip on yeah. you, Michael, and run you towards the shooter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the. Um, I love the guy's jump. Yeah. Well, he reacts to getting hit right yeah, there. Yeah, he got hit right there. Low abdomen. That yeah. sucks. A big old he, dick. He kept him, now, he made himself big right beforehand. So he's yeah. getting in front of the... He's staying where he's supposed to be. He's looking at the threat area. Yep. Uh, he's in between the protectee and where all those people are, the closest threat. The, the You can see immediately hearing it, the special agent in charge knows exactly what to do. That's a detail leader who's pushing yep. him in there, right? He's got a behind... He's already getting him in there behind the... Uh, they reacted super fast. They did. Like it, it was a varsity level reaction. Yeah. And crazy. He's still almost. Oh, you can see the guy's pistol right there. Yeah. There's the shooter right there yeah, in the that's, lower that's hand. That's the Hinkley right there. Holy shit. I mean, look at that's point blank basically. I was going to say, what do you think that is? 10 feet? Yeah. He's a shitty shot. But the. Uh, act, but he. Uh, so, okay. Modern 
modern thoughts on how this happened? Like, how do you guys prevent shit like this from happening? Like, obviously, really now, nobody's getting that close. Well, really now, if we yeah. get to this point, if we get to this point, we failed anyways. Yeah. So it's like, um, nowadays, there's so much more prep that goes into it. That's what I'm talking when you When you talk about the Kennedy assassination, when you talk about the attempt on 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 Reagan, it's really, it's night and day from what we have now. It's like, you know, it's like saying that a, a Model T is the same thing as a as a Corvette or something. It's, in, in theory, they are. You know, they're both vehicles. They're you both could call vehicles, them both vehicles. They're different yeah. things. So nowadays, God, such a good reaction from that guy yeah. stuffing him and in here's the car. And here's what's great: when he gets on top of there, he's feeling him for wounds. He's telling the driver, "Go to GW. Go to GW Hospital." Oh, that was just his initial call. That was just his initial call. Get to GW. Get to GW. And 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 so even back then, they they would have preparation. Yeah. So now. Uh, what's changed also since this time is now when there's a visitor, there's, there's always an agent at the hospitals. Yeah. We'll have an agent waiting. There wasn't an agent there. So what happened was... Probably with blood and well, all sorts of Well, here's what happens. Stuff. They call GW Hospital. GW Hospital thinks they're full of shit. They're going, yeah, the president shot. He's coming here. No, he really is. So now we have communications with the hospitals where we'll have somebody on site yeah. to make sure that communication is is made. So if there is an emergency, whether it's a, a, you know just a heart attack or a medical emergency or obviously something as horrible as this... Yeah. But this really changed everything because after this, you the, bumped out the le- yes. layers. Well, and also the, our methodology and the way we handle things is way different. Yeah, you know, we put so much more into it, so much more advanced work into it. Um, that and even now there was there was actually a secure garage built at this Hilton because of this incident. Was he just walking from a hotel to a car? I yes. didn't actually so, know the backstory of why he yeah. was coming outside. So I believe so. This is the Hinkley, or this they call it the Hinkley Hotel, or the H- Hinkley Hilton. Excuse me. It's a Hilton Hotel there. So he was in an event there, but he's coming out to go to his car. So there's a right to the driveway yeah. to go into the hotel. So he had to walk quite a ways to get to that car. I'm just being familiar with that area. Um, he's walking open, and obviously these people are unmagged, and there's literally press. You can see the boom mics and stuff. Yeah. Um, so really, it's just you don't. Have, none of this has been prepped, and it would never happen now. It just would not happen. Yeah, you could keep people a lot farther out. You could put them through a lot of yes. more additional screening. Yes, and I think after this, people realized also um, that you have to do that. But it, yeah, things changed with this, and, and it's always evolving. I mean, now we're even paying attention to like drones and all kinds of things. Oh, really? Hazmat. Um, See that guy with the wheel gun? That fucked up. He should have put it right in that guy's ear and pulled the trigger. <laughs> yeah, that would have been. Yeah, maybe he didn't. He must not have known where he was. I'm guessing this is when he returned. Obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah. So. Yeah, things are different now. And, and okay, don't think you're going to get away on the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> okay, and also from just, so- <laughs> just from just to, just <laughs> just to, just to satisfy my legal department. Yeah, this everything I'm saying does not represent the U.S. Secret Service. They do not endorse this wonderful yep. thriller. Uh, Everything that I say is endorsed by the Secret Service, <laughs> so we're well, good. Gotta, I'm doing the legal team a solid here and myself yeah. a solid. Um, As somebody who understands ballistics, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think the odds are that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone? Have you ever been? Uh, I've been there. I, I grew up in the Dallas area. It's, a, it's uh, very did, small. I didn't realize how short. It's very short. The, it, like compressed, you know, because yes. there's, is there still a fucking X on the ground there? I feel like there's. I don't a, think so. That would be pretty fucked up. There is something. So I was driving. There's probably some marker on the side. There's the a marker there that caught my attention because I actually didn't realize. I think I was in the back of an Uber. Yeah. And we were driving through. And it was either the Uber driver said something or I noticed that there was an indication. You, it's a fucking observatory is right there. Yeah. Right. And you're like, OK, that's not super far shot. Yeah. Grassy, no, grassy it's, knoll it's, looks pretty it, money, though. It looks really <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a really far shot. It's when not. You're, when you, no, but you see, yeah. it's not. When you go there. It's, it's between, super compressed. It's, yeah. It's like almost like watching. Um, yeah. It's almost like watching. It's almost like a studio. If you watch a studio, you, know, like a, you think it's much bigger. Yes. On, in video. And then you get to it and it's much smaller. So it's like. Yeah, here yeah, it right is. Here. Now, I'm just going to warn you because if you want me to entertain the, uh, uh, I'm just curious what your thoughts are. How do you guys I, talk I, about it inside of the Secret Service? How is the Kennedy assassination well discussed? It's discussed. Well, frankly, it's it's not discussed greatly. Uh, it's it's pro- it's discussed during like the initial training when you're new. Yeah, obviously, and all those different you're like, hey, attempted- don't do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. this is not how we do it. Um, Fucking convertible, broad daylight. Like, yeah. That's yeah. not awesome. That's not ideal. Yeah. <laughs> High ground issues all over the place. Uh, we're going to do a slow turn. And yeah. It's, and it's, uh, oh, that's point. right. They did, right? They came and they, they made... Coming, yeah, yeah, they're coming from down there, Houston, uh, Houston making a turn. And so they're, they're going really slow. So he knew. Also, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the 
the motorcade routes were in the newspaper. If I'm not mistaken, super I, smart. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I think they were because that's why people were lining the streets. Yes, that's why people yeah. lined the streets, and that's why he knew. Uh, he got up into the that that the building that he could get down to that he could make a. You ever been there, Michael? Slow shot. Uh, not here. Uh. Uh-uh. Have you ever actually been out of Montana? Yeah. <laughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. Where have you been? Uh, Tennessee, Texas, California, DC. Alaska. Where's Michael from? Are we going to have a Michael bio now? He's here. He's, he's, oh, from, he's from here. Okay. Yeah, the last... Yeah, he's moved to Maine. last half of my he, life. He's moving to Maine pretty soon. Okay. He thinks. No, I'm not. Just waiting for the Michael spinoff from the... <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> damn. <laughs> freeze frame on the gray matter being exposed. That's a rough one. Yeah. You know, it's the... I, I try not to be a conspiracy theorist, and again, I'm not an expert at any of this. Yeah. The trajectory that that one bullet would have had to take. Yeah. Well, you look, you know, like fuck me. <laughs> I say, okay, Jack. Jack Carr was a sniper, right? Yeah. Have you asked him about this? I was a sniper too. Oh, yeah, I didn't know you were a sniper. Yeah. Like, I apologize. I that's okay. <laughs> it's, I mean, I have shot through people plenty yeah. of times. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, a torso shot with like a 300 Wim mag mm-hmm. will penetrate. You'll, you'll see splash behind the person. Yeah. A headshot, it's going to exit on a 300 Wim mag for sure, but it takes it in my experience, it takes a more extreme angle generally uh-huh. when it does. Um, and I guess you could see splash, but it never does a fucking 180. Yeah. Right. Like it doesn't go through. Yeah. yeah. And then like do a left and then a right hand turn. Yeah. It also deforms as it hits, mm-hmm. you know, like they're designed to deform. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, you think this round, though, back then would be different? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Let's say the round. So it was a 6.5 by 52 was the round. I don't know what that is. 6.5 by 52. I know it was, I mean, it was a bolt action rifle. Carcano Did... model 38. Okay. Bolt action rifle. I mean, so let's say it was. Even if it's a modern day round, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say it's a modern day round back then. It doesn't change the fact that the supposed trajectory yeah. moved all over the place, yeah. and that they found this round like yeah, unmangled, yeah, yeah. but it yeah. would have gone off of bone no, and through yeah, there's, bone. There's a pl- there's plenty of chances. I, like I see why people have conspiracy theories regarding this, um, and I, my problem is I'm I'm predisposed, and I always take the simplest. I don't think the I'm not a big conspiracy theory. Person. Yes, look at it. So this so is how, the round they say that went through like three people. Yeah, perfectly intact. Yeah, that doesn't seem likely. <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert, but no, I, no, I've seen some. I've seen this stuff. I'm I, not an expert in ballistics. <laughs> yeah. But I am an expert at shooting people. Yes, I know and that. I have never fucking seen a round <laughs> like yeah. that before. It's ridiculous. I, I mean, and again. Here's the question, yeah. Mark, and you have to answer this truthfully. What are the odds that the Secret Service was involved in the assassination? Zero percent. That's such a Bush answer. <laughs> You're <Yes>. fucking... <laughs> I'm company. I look, look at his camera. Zero percent. Zero percent. Okay. I've heard... Well, I mean... It's easy. You know, if the you grassy the, if you know the, in all the movies too, it's but always like a Secret no- Service agent. It's always yeah. the undercover Secret Service guy. That it's the Manchurian kill. candidate. Yeah, yeah. what's well, just like in like an Air Force One. It's always the Secret Service guy. I mean, the window would be a great position to shoot from, right? Because they are traveling away from you, but they're not moving laterally. So you're, you know, yeah. it's way easier to track. Yeah. And then yes. honestly, the grassy knoll would put him into a fucking L ambush, which yeah. is textbook. Yeah. But it's a, much, it's a much, e- much easier. Obviously, the shot came from the depository building, though. I mean, you don't uh, think the shots shot... did come from there for sure. But you think they? What's your theory? You, uh, you want people... I so my understanding it, is that Oswald was not like some incredible marksman. Yeah, it wasn't an. Uh, it wasn't a very far shot. Like it was actually. Yeah. If you've never been, Michael, you should go. It's interesting to sit there because it, it is. is I'm pretty sure it is marked where his the fatal shot it's was. It's possible. I'm not. Yeah. You can look up at the window. And you're like, oh fuck, that's not that far. But shooting through. Uh, can you pull up a picture of his rifle? I'm pretty sure it had a scope yeah. on it. Because yeah, I, think, I think it did too. So if you shoot rack around out again, shoot back in, doing all of that without losing your sight picture, being mm-hmm. able to track the target, not impossible. But it's like it's also not not the easiest, right? So every shot he's going to take, he's going to have to rack with his right yeah. hand. Yeah. Bring the bolt all the way to the rear to eject it. Bring it forward mm-hmm. while tracking a moving target. Again, what was in this favor is that it was just going away, so it's probably just a little bit of an elevation gain. Yeah. 
Not impossible, but if you were to set that up with like a textbook L ambush, you would put people on the grassy knoll. Yeah. So you have the long axis. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah I know going. what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So it would have been four shots in eight seconds. Which is in and of itself not crazy. Yeah. From that distance? Assuming who you are, it's, again, so this is, if you took the, the best marksman in the world, they'd be able to do that with this tool, right? Because this mm-hmm. is just a tool, and largely it's going to be reliant on the skill level. I just don't know if Oswald would have been capable of that. Yeah. Is it impossible? I don't think so. I don't think it's impossible at all. Could he have gotten fucking luckiest he's yeah. ever been in his life? But it's also it's like the way he was taken out, was that's the thing that kind of is weird. When Ruby... Didn't they also announce when he was going to be like walked out of the yeah. police station as well? That's the thing that, if there's something that makes me question that it's something like that that's weird and you know it's not like i mean and also the background of ruby who shot him was questionable to say the least i believe there were ties into the mafia yeah, as well. there's all kinds of nonsense there so like i said i'm not a big conspiracy theorist guy i don't really don't, i haven't really dived into this but um there's i don't know if there's necessarily a lot of value in i i would hope at some point somebody fucking somewhere yeah this is in the president's book. Yeah, I, you know, which I've is met, national it, treasure it, you know, too. In the video, the, the Clint Hills, the East Secret Service agent, you see climbing on the back of. Yeah, of the, I'm, I've met him before, and he wrote a book and some things too. Like he knew the first lady really well back the then. The first lady, people watching that video, she's grabbing the back of yeah. his fucking head. She's grabbing, yeah, like brain she's, matter. Yeah, she's back, picking. The, yeah, she's picking up pieces. I yeah, mean, you can see his shock, and you can yeah. see his head just detonating. Yeah. Um, God, who fucking knows? Yeah. Yeah, I feel yeah. like there's a good chance it was a Secret Service conspiracy. Thirty two percent chance. See, it'd be dramatic if I took my head- headphones off and slammed it down and stormed out of there. Just tr- <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> and then you try like, to like, sweet, I can do that the rest of my afternoon. Michael, we got those motherfuckers. It's on tape. <laughs> <laughs> really, like a full on Maury Povich and just yeah. walk out. So they don't talk about that much inside of the Secret Service. No, we do, but it's just it's it's not like a daily. You know, it's not something. Yeah, talk I, I about. get it. I know I mean, we have like during training they do study that. Like for new agents or things like that, presumably still. I mean, they go over a lot of the, even the attempted uh, stuff on Ford and stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the modern era, would they ever, well, I don't even know if the Secret Service would have the authority to stop them, but can can a president even say anymore, like, hey, I want a convertible? It's just a fucking hard no. They're, they're in the bubble. Yeah, well, right? they, we have what we have. They're not, you know, that I don't think a president would ever do that. Yeah. I mean, there's, been I mean inst- there's some lessons to be learned from that one for sure. And there's going to be instances where, um, I think presidents, you know, will ask to go do something, and it's not so much a hard no. For, it's security wise, and it doesn't yeah. happen very often because it's so controlled their schedule and everything. It won't be a hard no so much as, um, you know, uh, they're going to explain why that's a bad idea. And of yeah. course, we have the military with us too. You have the military, the White House, the White House folks. So, what's the craziest thing you've ever heard of a? protectee or a president asking the secret service to do now, like, i wasn't there for this one but I heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> like i want to go wing walking on an airplane well, there with was Tom one, there was one overseas where there was a request this is by one of the a bigger a more important let's say uh it wasn't the president but a protectee um and they wanted to go to a refugee camp i think this was near the syrian border or something um and like i said i heard this from other people um, I wasn't on the trip and you know they had a planned trip in that area and of course under the circumstances it was very well planned and very you know a high level high risk situation anyway yeah lots of military help um, and then it was I want to go to the refugee camp and I can't imagine the reaction but I think basically what you have to do is go to the protectee um, the, the, the people and it, it's the military folks on the White House military office. It's our folks, because a lot of the evacuation and other issues that we deal with, the military has a huge part of that, obviously. Yeah. Um, and it, and you just explain to them why you may lay out in detail why this is a terrible idea, and that you know basically we can ensure that we can keep you safe in this situation. Actually. We think it's a really bad situation to put you in and be irresponsible. You know, you basically have to explain that to them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know because, like I said, I don't, it, I don't think people have ever been in that situation where, and I could be wrong. Obviously, I'm not. I wasn't the special agent in charge of the vice president's detail, the president's detail. You know, if you had one of them here, um, they may tell you something different. You know, like they may be privy to a situation like that that never got down to somebody like me. Um, but I think most of the presidents they. 
they understand. I mean, they understand the threat against them. Um, yeah. So I don't think you. I, I would be surprised if there was ever a moment where um, that happened in a real serious manner. Because there was well back in the day, back in the nineties, Clinton and I heard stories. This is before me, <clears throat> where Clinton used to jog on the mall. Yeah, White House Mall, and there was information of a person that was waiting for him there, and they convinced him he started jogging on the South Lawn. <laughs> After that, you know, yeah. and I think about the president jogging on the White House Lawn or on the South on the uh, the National Mall now is just bonkers. Um, I can, it's unheard of, but back then, at, at some point, and not that long ago, really. Yeah, it was uh, a couple decades ago. Yeah, so um, like I said, things change. Um, Maybe. Monica Lewinsky was hiding behind a tree. You know what I mean? Was he really <laughs> no comment jogging? <laughs> no, no comment. No comment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch the Secret Service guy get uncomfortable. But um, yeah, it's like look away. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, these are my views, and my views only. They do not represent the U.S. Secret Service. How could Clinton get away with the activities with Monica no Lewinsky well, without being observed by the Secret Service? I wasn't there. This is I didn't get hired until two. Yeah, but you know how this I fucking have, system I, works, I, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Michael's like, yes, real questions. Now we're getting there. Yeah. No, um, I do not know. Is it? How often is the president? Fuck. And obviously, speak broadly if you need to. Yeah. How often is the president not observed by the Secret Service? I mean, obviously, there's like they're not like hanging out. Well, I don't fucking know. Maybe they are hanging out in his bedroom, but. Like, if he's working in the Oval Office, I'm assuming there's not a guy in there with him, right? Like, because the building is, in fact, secure. Yeah, the whole thing's secure. So, yeah. mm, no, he, they ha and also they got to do things on their own. So, they're, you're not. Because you're in such a, a huge bubble. We have with such that a big bubble. We have, yeah, we have such a big bubble and we have such a secure perimeter. Yeah, you don't have to be on top of them constantly. And, and even when it comes to, to protection, physical protection, even if he's outside of there, there's times. They're still human beings and they need privacy. And plus, they have other yeah. issues. They're you know, meetings and things they're doing. Um, it just depends on the situation. But yeah, if he's in the Oval Office with his advisors or, or guests or whatever, there's not unless if they have, now if they have like outside guests like let's say he has I don't know the Boy Scouts you know the Eagle Scouts. If Michael goes through. to visit, you know, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have somebody in there and we're working tight. <laughs> the guys just gonna be sitting there just fucking just like constantly indexing his shit just yeah. <laughs> waiting for just, Michael yeah, just wait for him to make a furtive movement yeah but um <laughs> but yeah the um what do you think the odds are that the secret service when you weren't working for them and weren't involved in this yeah. directly didn't know that that shit was happening <laughs> you're just gonna keep pushing this i'm just curious i don't know i don't i honest to god i could i, could I feel totally like see, they knew. i could no i don't think they did honest to god well if you look back at like kennedy you yeah, know, the stories of but that him. was a little different. Time, Apparently, then. he was laying pipe all over the White House. But, okay, right? That was a different time and place. <laughs> that was a different time and place. For the stuff I've heard on, like, like all if right. you watch some of the shows about how that, that went down, that was right. they were he was being even the press corps knew what was going on. Like the press corps knew about that now. Yeah. They're not covered. Yeah, it. apparently it was the open secret. He would fuck anything that walked. Well, the press corps back then was probably all guys. Hundred percent, it was all, all heavily guys. smoking. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're they're probably blowing a point oh five midday. I mean, they just I'm not going to judge it. I'm not yeah. going to judge it. No, not, this, is not a, <laughs> this is a judgment free zone. But, uh, you know, they didn't care from everything I've heard. So I thought I could totally see how, how the Secret Service wouldn't know anything about that. A good, Honest to God. That's because, a good answer. Like I said, you're not around them 24 7. Yeah. Um, you see them a lot, you're around them a lot, but you're not right on top of them. They have some privacy. Um, as they should. Yeah. Yeah, as they should. And any of the, what, for, what the fuck do we call it? PSD, protective security detail. Uh -huh. A lot of it is like in transit. Like yeah. we were, I was on the cars I detail the first time I was over in Afghanistan. And you get the guy to his office and then you're out of the office, but you're kind of like around. They, they yeah. can move around like their bathrooms and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You got to give yeah. them freedom. You can't. I mean, and, and the White House is already kind of a fishbowl anyway. It's not that big. It's fucking tiny. Yes. A lot of people also confuse the White like because they, they see on TV the Capitol building. Yeah. They're like, that's the White House. Like, no. Yeah. That's not the White House. No. <laughs> no. It's not even close. Yeah. It's, it's not a big building. And uh, so I can imagine if you're there, that's the reason why, like, when people like crap on the president's, like, whether. Bush going to Crawford, or even Biden going to Delaware, yeah. or or Obama going to you know wherever. to Hawaii or wherever Martha's Vineyard to get out. I don't blame them. Or, or when people or when they crap on them for uh, for golfing, it's like you guys don't understand what they're on. They're twenty four seven on this job. Um, and it's you know it's always the other side. If it's they, like the, the Democrats didn't mind Obama doing nothing, yeah. the Republicans would crap. And then that's always the way. Yeah, you know, it's with, always with the Bush. Way. So. 
that kind of nonsense, I totally see why. Being on the inside, I can see why they want to do that. I mean, yeah. if I was, I would every other weekend I'd be gone or up to Camp David or something. I'll be honest with you, I don't know why anybody wants that job. It is, can you imagine the fucking responsibility? And like you said, yeah. there's also the performative aspect. Yeah. Like you don't, and I don't care about people's politics, but like I'm, I don't want to see Biden trip up the fucking stairs anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the, every time any microscopic things, and I'm using that as an example. Yeah. And I think almost about every, let's see, Bush threw up at a dinner with the Japanese prime minister. That was money. Yeah. <laughs> Bush Jr., do you ever see that video where he's dodging shoes? That motherfucker's yes, got that. moves. No, he's got he's got some serious. <laughs> Have you seen that him. one, Michael? Yeah, I've he's got fucking was, moves. At that time, I think I was a brand new agent still in Chicago, and I remember seeing that going. And you, it's like I go. Are we, the first thing in my mind is, are we going to start making people take off their shoes and move to the presidential <laughs> events? Is that what's yeah. going to happen? Are we going? Are we going that far? Do you need to though? Because that guy was like, he gave like a little chuck and well, jive. I guess it was, a, it was also yeah, he, yeah, and the look on his face, like his reaction when he came. He didn't back. give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think he continued with the speech or whatever he was doing. Yeah, but but, it, but it, everything that they do is so yeah. publicly scrutinized. Yeah, can you imagine it, yeah, the it really exhaustion a, no, involved? It, oh fuck yeah. Well, he was. I mean, Bush took good care of himself. He look was, at that <laughs> shit. He's an athlete. He lit like. How how fast do you think the Secret Service was on that shoe chucker? Yeah, I would imagine really fast. <laughs> I would imagine because you would have had somebody behind yeah. them or, and, and stuff. Look at this though. Like the first one, he jukes well. The other one, he's just like it's a shoe. Yeah, that was the second one. He gets an assist from uh, the president of yeah of uh, Iraq, and this is after I think the shoes were thrown. He's like, yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah. we're totally fucking good here. Yeah. Nope, there it comes oh, there, not there even close. <laughs> President of a country just getting footwear hucked at him. Yeah. Fucking I awesome. I was seeing that. I was like, yeah, I'm sure they were all over him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, but like, I'm, what, here's my guess. Is he what do both, you do? You, you make know, people come in barefoot? Like, you, like, know, you know, okay, he got those away fast. Those shoes came off at the same time. There's no way. Yeah. And the second one's a little off. He may have gone up with his offhand on the second one. Like, you're, if you're going to go, you're probably going to go with your, your strong arm first, right? Yeah. If you're throwing a shoe at somebody. Your first, the best right chance hand. of hitting is yeah. going to be the first one out of the gate. For sure. So you go with that, and then you know you're going to get mugged in a 100%. second. So you're, you're just, now you're just, you've missed. Yeah. Now you're just, you're just, you're just throwing and praying that it hits your target. It is an interesting uh, thought exercise from those responsible for protecting him. It's like, okay, now it's barefoot only because yeah. there's been a, you can't and do that to people. And you know how it is. It's, it's the same thing in all government it's very reactionary to yeah. you know everything's like oh that's a problem we didn't see we gotta fix it and and once again going back to the other stuff the reason i think we're doing better now and we're not perfect obviously like no other place in government or anywhere else but it's like uh you know we're, we're thinking forward better than we ever have i think um and you know like <clears throat> the drone thing i think is one of the, those things hazmat stuff you know by the drones you mean you guys are just aware that they're out there well they're, they're they, have, they have countermeasures like that I, I don't not a aware of all of them but yeah. i know some that we can't talk about but there are countermeasures because it's you know you see that sort of thing becoming an issue for sure you have to take that, all that stuff into account and you know everything from medical biochemical i mean and that's like i said going back to the reagan years or even or even further back to the 60s uh it's just not the same thing um and it's and it's and you know you hope or even like when terrorism became a bigger issue of course that becomes uh, a bigger concern um you know, is, is these foreign groups and things like that. Because the, 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 the years of, um, you know, for a while you're thinking of the single shooter, you know, all the way from 1865 to 1981. Yeah. So, and now that's changed. And now that's still an issue, but that's a relatively e easy issue. If that's the only problem we have, that's that, that one you can fix. Yeah, it's a linear threat. Pretty easy. But now you have uh, much more sophisticated things out there, obviously. And so we have to be working to to make sure that and working with partners outside to make sure that that's being done and that's how you compartmentalize our responsibility so you have a whole um protective plan in place and that's why so much work goes in that's why i said earlier if it gets to the point of what happened in front of the hilton yeah. with uh Reagan, 10 feet away with we've already pistol. we've already lost if yeah. it gets to that point uh that's no win even if he comes away unscathed that's not a win that's that's not good and uh we have to fix that and fortunately since then you know, knock on wood, that hasn't happened. But there's going to be attempts. It's just a matter yeah. of time. And, um, and it's, yeah, so it's, it's just about trying to stay on top of that shit, you know? And that's, and, and, you know, and you're always worried too. I think 
you know, overall you're worried about what are we not thinking of? You know, what is what things are contingencies or issues are we not addressing? And that's something that's constantly being you know thought about. And hopefully we're on, I think we're on top of that stuff. But sometimes you don't know until it happens. Um, yeah. Like the shoe. Like no one planned on the shoe. <laughs> but uh, I was impressed when I saw that. I was like, fuck yeah. He's, he's, still, still he's got a good it. athlete, and he, he he took care of himself. So yeah, which is a lot easier. We want you know if the president takes care of himself, at least takes some concerns off of your hands. At least you know health wise that. I don't know if Biden would have been able to dodge that shoe. I wasn't going conge- to conjecture on that. I'm not yeah. going to comment on it. And again, I don't have, uh, I'm not judging anybody anyway. I do think if you're in your mid 80s, you probably shouldn't be responsible for a lot other than actually shitting on a toilet yeah. as opposed to in your pants. He's elected. You elect him, we protect him. <sighs> That's true. <laughs> What's traveling like uh, on Air Force One? Um, it's, it's good. It's actually when. Uh, Is you know, it good, good food? Very good, actually. And um, you might as well eat it because you already paid for it. So we have an account and stuff. And You have to pay for the food on Air Force One? Yeah. What the There's fuck? An account. Well, the, no, I think it's the White House mess that does the food on Air Force One, the Navy mess. So that's just how it works. So there's no free lunches here, uh, Andy. You're a government employee <laughs> on a government airplane. They're not feeding you for free? No, back in the day. That's, that's trash. Change. What's that? I said, that's trash. Pro- you know how it is. You know it's going to be a budget thing, probably. I guess. You know, some other, I don't know who pays in for the food. Yeah. They didn't know, they're, hey, we're not going to pay those. We're not going to feed them for free. It's probably something like that. I don't know. I'm just pulling that out of, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's not, I mean, it's cool. I mean, the cool thing about it is like being just like a suburban cop for five years and then you find yourself on, I mean, even when you first go to the White House on President's Detail, you're like, so I can go anywhere I want. <laughs> you kind of feel like you're doing something wrong. Can you? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, but like just even like being near the, I mean, just being a new guy when you first yeah. start, they try to, you know, they kind of breaking you in, getting used to getting familiar with the lay of the land. Obviously, your responsibilities aren't nearly as much as, a, as you continue your time there. But there, I think everybody has that a little bit where you're like, now that goes away. But at first, it's like, so I can... I can walk right past the <laughs> oval and I can open this door and I can, okay. And then it's the same thing on the Air Force One. It's like when you first do that, I mean, and you don't want to lose that kind of the appreciation you have for it because it is cool. I'm a superb cop. Here I am down the road. I'm on Air Force One. You land, you're rolling up there. You see the crowds out there. And it's kind of a cool experience because you're on the inside, they're on the outside. And you have this job and you, you know, it's a very, it's, it's, it's an exciting thing because you feel like, you're, I mean, you really sense the, something being part of something special. Yeah. And like, I think um, there was a uh, Blue Angels pilot one time, I think it was Blue Angels, that said, I'm not famous, but I'm part of something famous, which yeah. I thought was a great way of putting it. Because when people treat you really well, and you may have had experience uh, having been, when people find out you're a Navy SEAL, like, holy shit, that's super impressive. Um I and, correct them immediately, though. If yeah, they think that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I imagine you do. I do. I'm no. like, no, trust me. I can teach no. a fucking monkey how to do what I did. <laughs> but you know, what I'm saying is the people that react to you that way. Yeah, and I agree. We aren't. You know, I'm. You know, the Secret Service. I'm not anything special. I was a suburban cop. I, I worked hard. I got where I want. But you could have done it too. It doesn't make me anything. Great. Do the uh, and I'm sure this varies per the protect e. Is it your job to kind of like be there but invisible? Do they ever come up and like interact with you? Is the president ever like walking down the hallway or like, what's up, Mark? Yeah, well, so on a big detail, uh, a lot of times the, the protectee, like the president or vice president, they know the bosses. They know the special agent in charge, maybe yep. some of the assistant uh, well, but they don't really know because there's so many of us. Yeah, for sure. And we all look alike, short haircuts, um, suits. So they'll get to know some of them, but they'll recognize you some. Like I remember being in a stairwell, the president would go up to work out. Obama and they would say good morning or something. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure when I left because I've been there for five years, he recognized me. He didn't know my name. Yeah. Um, whereas in other situations, the smaller details you get to know. You can get to know the protectee really well uh, because it's just you, the protectee, maybe two or three other guys. You know, it's but we're talking about a much smaller detail. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering what the what the policy is with the Secret <clears throat> Service. You're supposed to be visible but invisible. And well, the it depends on the situation. I mean, if you. You know, we used to call it proper tension. It's like, okay, so there's times you tighten up, usually obviously like a rally or something like that. Yeah. But you can loosen up in different situations. And I meant actually with interaction with the protectee. I was just curious if there was no, any policy not, for interaction. There's not necessarily a policy. I mean, if you sit there and, and try to be all chummy with them, I'm, I think the boss is going to go, hey. Shut or, the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, do your job, shut the fuck up. Because yeah. it's like, you're not there to be his buddy. And and these guys are busy. They got a job to do the president or who, the vice president. 
They don't unless if they address you, address them. But you shouldn't be going up to him and going no selfies. Other than other, yeah, no selfies are probably a bad idea. <laughs> TikTok video is probably yeah. a bad idea. Hey yo, come strong, over here for a second. Strong, Throw up some deuces. Strong, strongly frowned upon. <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. President, can you see hi to my mom? <laughs> you know that shit's probably happened. It, I haven't heard of it. I, like I somebody hope, on their last the, day, they're like, I, you know what? I'm getting, hope, I'm out of here anyway. Yeah. Like. I hope to God it hasn't. But if it, it has, I bet it has. And, and I hope the president looked over at the boss or somebody goes, um, make sure that's Dan, do something about this. <laughs> yeah, and it'd be something like that because they would know it's like this is not something that should be happening. So yeah, fair enough. All right. Yeah, I mean you got to keep a pre- professional distance and um, and I think that people know that because if you don't, plus if you did do that, guess what? You'd find yourself somewhere else real fast. Oh yeah, you, you're not going to be on the president's detail, or you'll yeah, you'd be like watching a dumpster in yeah, Iowa somewhere. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll be standing post in a kitchen at the uh, Holiday Inn or something like that on a trip. What's the least glamorous thing that you don't think people know about the Secret Service? <clears throat> Speaking of being on a kitchen patrol or staring well, at a dumpster, the a lot of it's like a lot of law enforcement. I mean, you, you talk about the the brochure shit, like the Air Force One, you know, the White House. Um, all those things are the trips and things like that going overseas. Uh, what you, they, people don't see is the monotony of it uh, in the long hours. Ho- but just like in the military or any law enforcement, it's like holidays, weekends, trap. You know, it's it, all that stuff. It's standing post. I mean, if there's a big rally at a uh, let's say at a coliseum or something like that, or let's say um, if he's going to the Army Navy game or anything like that, I mean, there are people out there 24 hours ahead of time, and they're oh, yeah. they're holding because they're sweeping all that area. So there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot of people. And as a young agent, I did a lot of that. Or I remember being on midnights at Crawford, Texas. It's pitch black out there, and you got you know equipment to, to see through that and all that. And, and but I mean, it's you're in the middle of nowhere, and people don't see that. That's not the part that people see, and that's probably one of the reasons why that and the travel and the lifestyle issues. That's why sometimes attrition can be an issue because people get on the job. Now they have a top secret security clearance. Mm-hmm. Um, they're marketable. If you're young, ambitious, and but you maybe you get there and you have a family and stuff. I was going to say it's a different story if you're single too. Yeah, no, it's totally different. And also, like my spouse has been great about it, um, and that's important because I think a lot of times it's there's two things. I think it's like I don't. Hey, I'm from Chicago. I don't want to move from Chicago because you're going to move. And the second one is, uh, you know, their spouse and kids. And those responsibilities. If, if it's if you know, if the pressures of the job start putting a strain on your household, you're going to make the call, even if you love the job. And most of the time, I mean, this is my theory: is that most people leave, they actually like the job, and they wouldn't mind because we've had guys come back. Yeah. Um, but the job just puts it just it's a it's a demanding job. I mean, it just it is what it is. And if you could go do something else and not have those demands. Um, and it makes mom happy and it makes yep. and it stuff, then you're, that's what people do. And I don't fault them for it. I, I don't either. All. Life happens to us all. Yeah. <clears> and they got to make decisions. Yeah. And it's incumbent upon us as an agency to, to recognize those difficulties. And they do. I think the leadership does, honestly, to recognize that and then to a, a, adjust to it as it is. Because the problem is the, the responsibilities of protection are not going away. They're the same. We just have to, have, and it doesn't matter. If we have 200 people or 400 people doing a job, obviously you'd rather have 400, but the job's going to get done regardless. If you, if these guys got to work double time, it's going to get done. Uh, but, you, but once again, that puts strain on them, and yeah. then suddenly you, you, you know, you're compounding the issues that might be happening you know, outside the job. So, Where were you uh, January 6th? January 6th. So my responsibility at the time, so I'm, I was in dignitary protection, still am, uh, my job was credentialing and identification. So basically, we were getting ready for the inauguration. Okay, so you were in D.C. I was in D.C. Yeah, but I just missed that. So I was out at Union Station, and we were planning the arrival of of, of the pre, of the president elect Biden. And I'm just my role was pretty. I mean, we were getting ready for the inauguration. My role is an important in this particular case, but I was there for the walkthrough, and I saw. You know, it was, it was a pretty easy day, but it was all, you know, there was a lot of people downtown. And yeah. we were at Union Station, which is, for people who don't know, is cl- real close to the Capitol. Um, and so we saw all the crowd there. The crowd looked peaceful. It was a typical, you know, Trump supporter type crowd. Not anything that we haven't seen a million times at rallies uh, and things. Um, I drove home, so I missed it all. I drove through, and like I said, there was no indication at that time, um, zero, that I could see. 
of it turning the way it did. When it did turn the way it did, what's the reaction to the Secret Service at that point? Do you guys just go into hard lockdown? Yeah, they went into hard lockdown big time. Yeah. Um, because that shit. And once again, I wasn't quick. I wasn't at the White House, but you yeah. know something like that happens, and they're amping up the the security level real fast. And it's well, and and also remember, Vice President Pence was in the Capitol, and I knew actually, I knew shit the, he was. That's right. And I knew the bosses who were working that um, because when I got home, and I turned on the television, and you see people storming the Capitol, you know, like what the fuck is going on? I mean, because I'm still in my seat. I literally just walked into the door, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! And I'm like, I'm getting ready, so. I'm like, I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm thinking I may be putting my shit back on, yeah. not in a suit, but in, you know, something you know, like a vest and stuff and heading downtown. I didn't know what was going to happen. There was a lot of contingencies that, in the next days afterward for that. And that's the reason why also, if you remember the, during the inauguration, I mean, it was, it was locked, the inauguration was locked down like nothing I've ever seen. Um, and and I was in, in, in response to all this, but yeah, Pence was in the, in the Capitol and they got him out of there. And I actually... I don't know 100 percent how they got them out, but I know how I would have gotten them out. I'm pr- yeah. I imagine that's what they did. Um, but you know, they, you know, once again, I'm proud of our guys for doing the right thing uh, because if I if the news reports were right, I think Pence wanted to stay. Like he didn't want to have that look of running from. That was not the call for him. No, he, it he wasn't. Get the fuck and, out and, of there. No, no, and and uh, but I can understand his his impulse, you know, because yeah. he's like trying to. He's like, hey, I'm going to get my job done, but <clears throat> not the time and place. Yeah, because it was an unprecedented situation. Yeah, and and the Capitol Police, who we work with a lot, they did the best they 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 did the best they could. I know there's a lot of reports of stuff, but the vast vast majority of the guys and gals there. Um, they, you know, they held the line in in, in, a, in a really almost an impossible situation, and I think a lot of lessons were learned from that. Obviously, once again, it's you know reactionary. Yeah, yeah it happens too often. You know, we just never see anything like that. What in a total hypothetical? I'm just fascinated by because the Capitol building and the White House are not right next to each other, but they're not incredibly far away. Mm-hmm. And you know, the title of your book is Fence Jumper. Let's say yeah. that for whatever reason and pull out who they were supporting or not. A group of, a, a mob of Americans decides to lateral from the Capitol building to the White House. And they do start jumping the fence. At what point is the Secret Service authorized to start dumping people? Like, is it if you cross that threshold? Okay, I have an opinion, but in, you know, in law enforcement, there's more gray than there is in the military when it comes to shoot, yeah. don't shoot. Um, now, if you have well, I'm just it's interesting, right? Because they may not be armed, but it's like yes, and that's how, hap- we've had that happen individually. Yeah. Now, fortunately, I'm talking like 40, 50 people start no, climbing the wall. Like, no, what I the think, fuck do you do? No, I think you're I think you're justified at that point if they're <sighs> running if they're running aggressively at the White House, and you have and you have people running who are clearly looking to. So, I think, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. This is not the yeah. This is not the, the necessarily the Secret Service's protocol. There's no set like you do this then and you do this. You know, it's the call of of. I mean, just like a police officer has a uh, a use of force continuum. Continuum, yeah. Um, hostilized, hostile intent. Yes, and I think you have that hostile intent. If people jump and run, <laughs> I think you can make a you can make a real easy case that one guy jump like we had, especially the North Fence Line. The North Fence Line is much closer to yeah. the White House. If somebody jumps in and starts hauling ass to the front door of the White House and possibly has a, a vest, you don't know what he has. You know, yeah. or, um, I think I think you could. And it's, let's say, hope ideally the canines would take him down or something before that hap- It gets too far. But it's once again, if he's athletic, it's not far. Yeah, if it's he, really not. The South Fence is way farther away. Yes. So there's a lot more standoff, a lot more uh, ways to to take it down uh, to to a. And also we have we have the response teams there on the grounds, if they respond on time. So that shoot don't shoot. It's, if it got to a point though, I think you're justified. Yeah. Uh, maybe not initially, but it, it gets to a point if the guy's still coming, it's the call the officer has to make. And That'd it's, be it's fucking not, tough. And it's not it's not easy. Well, when the one jumped from the north fence line years ago, um, and he got he actually got inside. Remember into the mansion. Didn't he encounter a female agent upon opening the front door? I will not confirm what the I don't remember uh, what what the gender the I just know it got it wasn't an agent it was a uniform division officer but it was it was a cat guy that was off duty that got the guy inside and a lot of things were changed since then too was the fucker just running around in there opening doors no he didn't, he didn't no no in, our, in fairness to us god damn I wish I didn't bring this up <laughs> but the um no in fairness to us the um uh, he didn't get very far in. Yeah, but uh, let's what, not remove think, the fact that he got in. 
No, th- there's no, there's no <laughs> excuse. I'm not. Look, I'm not making excuses for this. Um, and, and and no one's going to make excuses in our job for this because it's completely unacceptable. Now, I think things were changed. I think you know. I think that's just. I don't know. I don't want to like, speculate or or speak because it would be sounding like I'm speaking for the Secret yeah. Service. I don't want to do that. I have the solution to this one already. You electrify. You electrify the fence. Yeah. If you touch it, you die. Well, now they. Well, they have uh, the fences now are much. You're not scaling that 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 fence now. They've cha- the defenses have you know, um, the ones that were there before. Yeah. Uh, I've been there a long time. Uh, the junior agent of the day needs to go apply Crisco to each and every bar of that fence, and nobody will get over. I'm not opposed to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. Moat, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> just something. He has to go scale each individual pole and fucking Crisco <laughs> from the top down. Yeah, you want it? You're going to earn it. Yeah. Um, just sit there, and the guys just watch him like vainly try to climb it. I wonder, what did that person who jumped that fence and ran it? What did? What were they trying to do? What did they think, think they were going to do? I think he was just let well, you get it. So the White House is like a magnet for men, mentally for crazy, people. yeah, for yeah. crazy people. And so, you know, the, and the, by the way, I want to shout out to the Uniform Division. They don't get the, the agents get all the credit. Uh, the Uniform Division folks that, that guard the White House to do that job uh, have a really hard job because it is. You talk about it's a it can be very monotonous. It can be long hours. Um, but the counter people don't realize the counter snipers, the canines, those are all. Uniform division. Yeah. And Uniform division just scooped up that kid not too long ago. They're like, yeah, sco- scooted in between. They're like, picked yeah. the kid up and brought him back to the parents. <laughs> yeah. And they do a great job. And, and, and it's a hard job. I really un- underappreciated. And a lot of them do come over as agents later, um, but they don't get the credit they deserve. And so, um, yeah, they're, they're manning that, that fence line. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't remember what I was about to say now. I was asking you what that person, what you think they were trying to accomplish, oh, that one who I don't came think he door. knew what he was trying to accomplish. So you know, people show up, and the uniformed guys deal with it, uh, is the, uh, they're dealing with, uh, you know, crazy people. It's, they, you know, they drove from, like, Dayton, Ohio, and they said that the president's been talking to him. He's got something really important to tell him, or he, he thinks he has a, you know, very mm. crazy, far out. You know, uh, kind you of paranoid. Know. You don't know. You weren't in the office when <laughs> yeah. he was calling him. Yeah, <laughs> got to hear both sides. <laughs> you got to hear both sides. Um, Fuck. <laughs> but the um, I bet that happens every day. Oh, it does. I think no, every day, at multiple times a day. When we call like a uh, fence jumper available on Amazon. Uh, you have fence jumpers, which are one thing, and then yeah. you have uh, you know gate callers. We call them because they'll literally go right up to the uniform division guys and gals. And once, like I was saying, hey, I want to talk to, um, I want to talk to the president, or I want, you know, whatever it is. And it's, and if we have, you know, protective intelligence people will talk to them. Well, yeah, they, we may keep some records. You know, we may put them on record or something because if they have, especially if like somebody has, that has like a some fascination with the president or something, and then the president goes on, I don't know, he goes to Des Moines, and that guy shows up, and is doing the same thing, yeah, and then then somewhere else. And now, now we're starting to see a pattern where this person is not just. They're actually being actively, you know, going going to sites and, and have like a, uh, and so we may keep a, a closer eye on. And, and yeah. they haven't done anything. There's no, you know, there's civil rights. They haven't done anything wrong. It's an intelligence package. Yeah, is what you're but you know, about. yeah, it's yeah. an unusual a pattern of behavior. You guys would be not doing your job if you didn't yes. do that. And you have to. Yeah, and and, and, uh, and a lot of, like I said, a lot of that's uh, mental illness and stuff like that, I think. Yeah. I'm not a big protective intelligence guy, so I don't know. A lot about that area, but that's the type of thing that that concerns us. Obviously, let's help everybody out. Has anybody ever come up to the White House gate and gotten five minutes with the Prez? I'm going to no. say the answer is no. No. All right. Not, so anybody not, listening, don't fucking waste your time. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just stay home. <laughs> yeah. Stay oh, home. It's so funny you're here on Tuesday. Like, He's got yeah. five minutes it's right now. This, we got we got an election in a couple of years. You, you can get your you can get your time then. But like you know, back in the day, like back before. Probably in, in the 18th cent or yeah, 1800s, I mean, you could you could literally picnic on the White House lawn back a long time before ago. there was even a fence. Probably, yeah, yeah, there was no fence at all. It was, it was considered it still is a national park. Um, and the West Exec and East Exec or West Exec in particular, which goes right by the the mansion, it was wide open up and before I think up until about World War II. You could just wow. drive right by it. Um, but it was obviously a different world, and that's what you know things change over time, and it's it's crazy to think about that now, but. So how long have you how long have you been a Secret Service agent or officer? So, so I'm a I'm a Secret Service agent. I've been doing this, um, and it'll be 22 years in August. Are you getting to the end of your rope with it? I am. Uh, my I have a son that's a he's at the Corps of Cadets actually in Virginia Tech, um, 
or he's got he's just finished freshman year, so we're going to do it a few more years, stick at DC. And, and overall, I like the job. Um, it's you know there's there's times as you get older too where you're like the sleep deprivation and that kind of thing doesn't become any easier. You yeah. know when, when you're having to to do uh, you know it's it's a lot easier when you're younger. Yeah, just long nights suck. Long nights or long duty uh, days. Or, yeah. Or, yeah, or long days and you got to short change it to another day. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give it a few more years. You know, at least four more, something like that. What do you guys get paid? I think I asked Evie this, but are you guys paid on a GS scale? Yeah. Okay. And now you can eventually you can get to the you get high enough uh, into the and this won't be me by the way you get up to the SES level, um, but yeah, typically the rest of us are on a GS scale. And then there are you can make more money doing protection. Um, it's you know because you have to incentivize like there has to be some incentive to, for people to do this. It can't just be for the love of the game. You yeah. know, it's got to be because the protection takes up so much of our time. Um, and that's where you can get, you know, overtime and things like that above that. Um, you know, and some people, you know, different people gripe saying, Oh, it should be more, it's not enough. And th- you know, obviously you're going to have that, but, uh, and there's a cap on that, but I'm not getting into the weeds on it. Yeah, for so. sure. What do you think you're going to, uh, you're going to do when you're out, when you have the chance to do kind of whatever you want to do? Well, uh, if, uh, my book goes well, uh, and and it's picked up by Chris Pratt to do a movie. Great, we'll go with the author. But I think what's really going to happen is my wife and I, when our son's out of school, we'd like to get back to the middle of the country. That's kind of where we are from. Yeah. Whether it's you know my brother lives in Denver or Kansas City again, um, and maybe you know a lot of people go to corporate security and different private sector jobs. You know, because the thing is, I'm done. I'll be in my, you know, I turned fifty this fall. I'm not going to be very old. So. You know, that's the 50 is super old to say. OK, well, it feels that I was, I was going to try to. It's the, I thought 50 was a new 40. Is that am I wrong about that? like if you were to think of where the Grim Grim Reaper is for you? He's like one step behind you. <laughs> nah, yeah, he might okay. even be like, you never know. See, I was hoping you agree with me. That, <laughs> so, so much for that theory. Well, OK, yeah, I'm to the age. Do you of, feel young? No, no, I, I feel fine. But it's like I was a joke this morning. I worked out. I got and I realized the elevation is a little higher. But I also noticed that I'm getting to the age where walking is becoming exercise. I used to make fun of those people. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, so it's, it becomes a trot to a walk, and then it goes, my knee hurts. And then it becomes a trot, knee hurts, walk. So, What activities uh, do you do for fun? Uh, golf, not well. Yeah. But that's what I do with my son. Um, watch a lot of sports, barbecue, grill, okay. read a lot. Um, okay. Not, I, you know, I think a lot of guys, I know you're an outdoorsman. I'm not a. I like the. I'll, I wouldn't call myself. I like being outdoors, but like the people I think are outdoorsmen are like full on Renaissance men. Yeah, Cam Haynes or <clears throat> Cam Haynes is a little bit much. <laughs> Anybody okay. who runs a marathon a and day. He's older for than ex- me, and I see him running on there, and I Fuck. feel like shit. It's like, but yeah, I hear you. Talk I think about, he's in his mid fifties. Yeah, I know. It makes me feel really inadequate. He's climbing. He's like running up mountains and jumping on like tree stumps. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm walking. I was walking today because I hurt my knee hurt. Yeah. No, the guys I think of, of like mountain men or and Michael knows him too. It's like Nelson. He, it's like, he's a four season dude. Yeah. The second he can get a boat in the water, he's like river rafting yeah. and guiding and fishing. Um, and, but before that it's like, he's probably off bear hunting this week. He's a sheriff's officer too. Who, he's out here. He's out here. Yeah. yeah. But he's like hunting, riding a dual sport motorcycle or he's on a snowmobile or he's snowboarding. Or in the summer months, it's just like he's guiding all sorts of shit. Some and somewhere in this, he yeah. works. Yeah, I don't know how much he works. Yeah, well, he's probably been on the job a long time. He's been on the job long enough. Yeah, I don't know how he gets as much time off as, yeah. as he does. Yeah, I don't know. He might, you know, maybe he waits behind the tree to give people hand jobs when they go jogging. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's just that's something I mean, that, that they do. We're is the, the judge for you here. Yeah, I'm not going to judge yeah, Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's, your, it's your golf time, whatever you want to do. But he's like a mountain man. Like yeah. he, every season he's got something to do. I yeah. I, I really do enjoy where I live, and but there are cer- certain times where I'm like, I'll just wait for the weather to get better. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck it. I have seven activities I can do right now. Yeah, yeah. To include jerking off other uh, sheriff's officers <laughs> so he can get time off. You, you actually know? know him very well. Yeah. Yeah. Michael does too. A little too know. well. Yeah. Whew. I was just going <laughs> to <Okay>. say. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. Yeah. Have okay. you rolled with him recently, Michael? The last time I saw it, I've never rolled with Nelson. Actually. Really? He's always 
not there. He ever. was a four stripe white belt when I started. He was the one who talked me into it. And I was there at his blue belt Iron Man. The other two people who got their blue belt that day quit. Um, yeah, he's still a blue belt. That was four plus years ago. Dang. <laughs> Michael's Catching knocking up. on the door of his purple belt at this point. Yeah. I think you'd fuck him up. I feel like he's pretty strong. Who, Nelson? Yeah. No, not at all. No. That was sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not strong. No, no, not at all. Not even with like his will. You know what I mean? Like intestinal <laughs> fortitude. <laughs> at least his jujitsu will isn't strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know how the fuck we got off that. He's the, yeah. he's like the, he truly is though. I, I love him to death. I give him a lot of shit, but yeah. he like is a Renaissance man in Montana. Like yeah. he's the dude who will be in his fucking eighties smoking an ivory handle pipe talking yeah. about the fucking legendary stories all yeah. from Western States. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, it's going to sound like something out of a, like a book. Like he's already got those. Yeah. Always it's, got them. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's always not off familiar with him doing something. So huh. I'll have to check. Is he, is he big? Is he big on social media too? Like no, other, no, no, not at all. He's okay. a complete fucking idiot when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, I was going to say he could probably monetize that. He's not going to monetize shit. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, too busy. I could see him doing like an OnlyFans, taking pictures of like his butthole <laughs> and feet. You know what I mean, Michael? Like he could monetize that, but uh, I don't see him. Yeah. <laughs> do anything other than that that's really funny yeah i don't know what the kso policy is on only fans but he's probably <laughs> flirting with whatever policy that they have do you think you want to continue to do security when you get out i'm always fascinated by that and i asked that question because the career i came from a lot of people they kind of find something that's like 70 percent of what they used yeah. to do because it's easy yeah well i know people who've gone to a lot of guys go to the banks and do well they'll, they'll get hired i know like i know people who are in like the nba who do security but they do like larger yeah. stuff it's not physical security i know some people who do um uh, like the ceo stuff which is very demanding because obviously they're going all over the place yeah um and then other people find other things to do outside of this um you know i hope the writing thing goes well but i also know how competitive it is and how i'm being realistic about that yeah but i think something like corporate security getting into that uh in 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 you know, I have to. You know, the thing is, and it's an adjustment. When you see people, a lot of smart people do really well out there, but you have to adjust. I mean, the the, the private sector is not the public sector. I mean, you spent twenty something years in the in the public sector. It's an adjustment because, um, and you know, it's, you know, you, the job security is great. Yeah. But then you go to the private sector, you better get your shit done, and we'll just throw you out. Well, in the public sector, like you're saying, the job security is great, but let's not paint the picture like it's all rainbows and no, gumdrops. No, it is absolutely not. Right? No, no, a, no, no, you're right. There's a cost that comes at that, but it's, you know, in the military, Yeah. best days are the 1st and the 15th. Yeah. Because I don't give a shit what's going on <laughs> in the world, I get my fucking paycheck. Exactly. You know, and so that's awesome, and it's like, oh, well, if I have a heartbeat and I stay at every two years, I get an incremental bump or you get a cost of living allowance. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, what would be the best way to describe it? I don't think it's a system that is designed to indoctrinate people. Yeah. But I think it can yeah. if you're not careful. It's yeah. just kind of laid out and it's laid out. I hope people can. And, I, and I'm not knocking military service or public service in any stretch, but yeah. it's laid out for the benefit of those that you are serving and not mm -hmm. necessarily yourself. And so just remember that going into it. Yeah. And I think um, though you're absolutely right. I, I agree with that 100 percent. I think uh, you have the job security. Uh, but the job is still really hard um, and demanding. But there's an adjust. I just know guys who have done it, and I know guys who have done it very, very well. Yeah. And and it's usually the guys you expect to do very, very well doing that. But you know what I'm talking about too. Then there's the other guys who they don't even want anything to do with that. Yeah. And I can understand that too. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's not what you're jammed. And you know, if you just say, hey, I just I get in my retirement now. I've saved up. I want something lighter, you know. I'll just go be a, a, a starter at the golf course and, yep. and have an easy life, play a lot of golf, and I may not make as much money, but I'll be able to do what I want to do. I'll see, you know. So there's no wrong answers, but I and I know people who've done both. Uh, and I'm still, I'm looking to see what that'll be. I don't know what it'll be, but um, you know, uh, you know, we just want to get back to the middle of the country and do that. And and uh, and I only have, we only have the one kid, so once he's out of school, we're not tethered to anything. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, what path did you actually take? <coughs> We've been obviously bullshitting on all the yeah 
inside assassination attempts from the Secret <laughs> you Service. Were waiting, you, were, you were waiting to just ambush me with this. And you've been waiting forever. It's like, no, anyway, really? Every, I'm just kidding. If I'm honest, like all that <laughs> shit came to me real time. I was like, oh, fuck. I what about this that. one? <laughs> I kind of sensed that. Yeah. <laughs> what led you to the Secret Service, though, in the first place? Yeah, so when I was... so. I went to Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas. Great school. Played ball there so I could get more CTE after high school. So football. Yeah, okay. football. You played football, right, too? No, no? my mom wouldn't sign the permission oh, slip. Really? She thought it was too dangerous. So we played in the 80s and 90s, so we just hit each other in the heads. Um, so I got done great school. Got wanted to stay in Kansas City. Got hired by the Olathe Police Department, which is a suburb of Kansas. And it was Did like, you knew you wanted to be a, go into the law enforcement track early on? It, you know, what's funny, when I first went, I, was, I signed up as a journalism major because I liked to write. Okay. And then I realized in about one semester, this is not for me because I like creative writing, but I didn't like trying to write about factual crap. So I switched to criminal justice because I didn't like the idea of being in an office. I didn't really. And, and I, I really did have in my head that I eventually wanted to be a federal agent, whether that's FBI, Secret Service, whatever. Did you have a family history of that of any kind? No. Well, you know, what's funny, the only. Uh, well, now we do. But before my great grandfather, who came over from Ireland was Thomas McCormick. He moved to St. Louis, and from 1899 to 1925, he was a cop in St. Louis. And I literally, one of my, uh, on my desk, because I got it from one of my uh, uh, relatives, was a picture of him when he became sergeant and stuff. That was really it uh, that I was aware of. I'm not aware of anybody else since then. Um, now, I do have a nephew down in Ocean Springs area of Mississippi who's a cop, but uh, he... Uh, not like some crazy family legacy. No, it's not like one of these Chicago families where it's like grandpa, dad, son. It wasn't yeah, anything it's just like what that. they do. Yeah, that's just their thing, like a fireman family or something like that. It wasn't like that. So I wanted to stay in Kansas City. Got hired by Olathe, which was kind of like my, um, I call it my graduate school because I was kind of naive. Small town, small college, partied, had a good time. Go to to um, Olathe PD, and it was a great group of guys. And people there, it's still I'm still attached to them. I'm still close to them, even though I'm so far removed from them. Um, but I remember, like when I, was, when I was with my FTO, I think it was like the first or second week, and I was like 23 years old. And I think everybody has this. I assume everybody has this moment in the military or in law enforcement where, like, what the fuck have I got myself into? Because <laughs> because uh, I go. <laughs> So, cause, Watched well, a little bit too much Law and Order, did yeah, you? Yeah, I was like, what is, I go, well, I'm just went Chicago the, PD. I just went to the academy. They wasn't, they weren't this mean. But anyway, the so we went on, we went on a domestic and and uh, the old DV. Yeah, and so I'm with my FTO, and and it's a shots fired domestic thing. We get there, the basically the mom and kids come out to us. The, the dad's inside. There was, she, she said she heard shots. Anyway, we're watching the front door. He comes crawling out. He shot himself in the chest. A suicide attempt? Yeah. Well, it was like, and it's also, I've seen it happen before where they're trying to make a point to their, I don't know what the situation was, but they're trying to make a point to the to their lover or spouse by shooting themselves in the chest. Or maybe they just don't want to fuck up their Do head. they go like a fucking extreme angle? No, I think he just went like this. Because the whole. That's not a good way to prove a point if you're not serious. That's the fucking ticker right there. I know, there. but he. Well, it, it must. I don't know what he was using, but you got to understand, I'm 23. I've never experienced anything like this. Yeah. So I'm like. And, and so he comes crawling out comes with crawling a fucking out, chest wound. And the guys are giving, you know, they got the guns drawn. He's crawling out. And this is like a pretty nice suburban neighborhood, right? Um, he comes crawling out. And you know, I'm, the one thing I learned is the other cops. Um, on the scene, or experienced guys calling them. You know, I'm doing. You know, I'm doing my part, but yeah. I'm not. I'm basically have my weapon drawn at them, but I'm not doing commands because I, there's a mild freak out going on the yeah, side. You're like, trying to figure out what the fuck yeah, is going it's on. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, maybe that journalism wasn't a bad idea. <laughs> so anyway, and they're like, um, so they pull them out. They're checking them to make sure. And, and here's the thing I picked up on. I remember this because it was yesterday. The uh, they're they're asking them. Who shot you? They're already calling. And then they're like, Brandenburg, cover the door. And I'm like, okay. And then, you know, I start covering the door because the door's still wide open. And you just throw a few rounds in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah, get their heads down. Good. Just to, yeah. Yeah. Bop, bop, bop. We're good. <laughs> Nobody out there listening to this do that. Please. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. joking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, the lesson I learned was is how these experienced guys were super calm, asking what to do. They're already because they know this guy's probably going to expire, which he did. Uh, but I just remember, I mean, I was in an apartment at this time. I literally had like a box springs and mattress on my floor. Yep. I had what would back in the day, for the people who don't know, in the 90s, you had a boom box. Uh, they still, don't know, do they? They have no fucking idea. Michael, do you know what a boom box is? He's like 17 yeah, years old. I don't know what a boom box is. What is it? 
the thing you put on your shoulder? It wasn't quite that. Mine wasn't quite that bad. I can afford that fanciness. Now you're looking like like somebody's skating in Venice Beach in like the seventies or eighties. Yeah, that's what I think of. Mine had a no. Mine had a compact disc player. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, <laughs> Michael's an old soul. He knows a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> about the glorious U.S. history anyway, that we grew I, up in. I remember, yeah. I remember laying down on my box spring and mattress, going, "Once again, what the fuck have I gotten myself into?" But then, but like I said, you start growing, and also the other thing that I found to take away from that first year or two, I'm you know in my early twenties, I'm showing up in these domestics, and you have people who are in their forties and fifties whose life is a mess, yeah. and you go in there and you got to make a decision. And what my FTOs did. Uh, and I can I still don't know those guys' names. I you know it's you know it's funny those years you remember their names. Yeah, for sure. Um, telling me make a decision. Like we went on one, and my FTO was like, make a decision. You know I don't give a shit if it's a wrong decision. Just make a decision. And he was teaching me something. It's like you can't sit here in him and hall. I know these people are old enough to be your parents, but you got to figure it out. And he said, and if it was if you make a really bad decision, I'll stop you. <laughs> but just make a decision. And he goes, you'll probably be right if you stick with what I've taught you and what you know and what you've yeah. seen. Well, freezing is the worst thing you could do. You just need momentum of some kind. You can yeah. at least make a decision in course correct. Yeah. But uh, it's like if you're ever on the receiving end of an ambush, if you sit there in paralysis, that's the most dangerous thing to do, actually. Yeah. You're actually better off making a move in you know, technically or tactically the wrong direction and correcting yeah. from it. You're still moving. Moving yeah. target is harder to hit than a static target. Exactly. And, and, and even like with uh, – even with like uh – and I always go back to sports and football a lot of times too. It's like, okay, you may make the wrong, I, you may make the, the wrong cut or something like that. Fix it. You know, do, do yeah. some, make another decision, but don't stop. Um, you know, it's interesting with that story you're telling about the DV, the first one, and then the subsequent ones. I wish there was a better way that the law enforcement occupation could be portrayed. Yeah, I don't think people realize how much officers or first responders in general respond to those type of situations it's yeah. the fucking worst yeah. i did a very brief ride along recently uh -huh. and one of the, the actually the first call was a dv yeah. alcohol involved always, and it's just almost always and it's just you're they're trying to do the best they can with what can only be described as a shit sandwich. And then yeah. but then they eat that shit sandwich and it's like, "Hey, guess what? Yeah. Here's six more in your fucking computer." Yeah. I don't, and the wait till you're and they're blacked out. You know, they're going from call to call to call yeah. some nights. And some nights nothing happens. The Are, weight of that though, the yeah. and the it's not even the weight of that. I worry about people who I use the analogy of a tea bag. Yeah. You know, the longer you put a tea bag into a cup of water, mm -hmm. the darker it gets and the more that that just spreads out. Yeah. And the people who have this as an occupation, they they live in that water yeah. and the weight of that it's again everybody everybody wants perfection at all times. Like yeah. cops should re respond perfectly and I mean, yeah, you should always aim to do the best that you can, but I don't know how you accurately describe the impact that that has because at the end of the day mm -hmm. cool oh, you got a sweet batman belt and a yeah. body cam and a vest you take all that shit off you're still a human being at the end of the yeah. day yeah and you're still going on with the rest of your day and it does i think it does build up and it just like oh i know for a fact it builds and it up. builds up and everybody has a different tolerance level there's a reason why like life expectancy for officers after they get out oh. like heart disease yeah. smokes them yeah at a statistical rate that is shocking yeah it, 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 it's a joke almost with within cops that they don't live long. I, mean, I wondered that. So when I left after five years, I, I was like, how do these guys do this yeah. for 25 years? How did they do it for 30 years? And, and guys do. Some and guys I, do, and some guys get spit out the other end of the meat yeah. grinder. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, because I remember on a, going on a call where literally we show up there. It's, a, it's day shift. And we show up on a call, and there's a, a child who's not breathing. Now, it, just, it comes up. You go there. I remember... I had gotten there a little bit after some other people, and they're giving CPR. This I'm literally an infant in the in the living room, and I go to the dad. And I can see the dad's ashen and stuff. I go and I asked him. I go, is it? I go, does he have a condition? He did. They knew this was going to happen. Yeah, it, it doesn't make it any easier. No, no, it doesn't make it any easier. And you have six hours left in your shift. You you would leave that call and you park and you and you ask somebody or you ask one of the other guys, hey, you want twenty one? You meet somewhere. You go, hey, dude, are you all right? Are you good? Because, uh, you know it. Like I said, even just the five years I did it, I can remember that like it was yesterday, and that's yeah. and that was just one call. You know, that was literally one call and one shift. So now you times that at somebody who's five five. They've had twenty five years of doing that. 
Yeah, I, I, I scraping about, up families off of roads and, and people, accidents. Yes, like, accidents. Uh, when I see hear about accidents or I hear about um, those type of things, yet people don't realize these are happening all the time. Even the people who are oblivious to all this, who live in the suburbs, yeah. oh, it's safe here, and they think the cops are just there to harass, or, or, or they're there. They're nice. There are cops. There are friends, and everything's fine. They don't know what the cops are doing. They don't know they're going to domestic calls, and sometimes really nice neighborhoods. It's not like they, all this stuff happens. All the shit doesn't happen in terrible neighborhoods. You, those type of calls, and those are as you as you pointed out, are dangerous calls. You don't yeah. know what you're getting into, because also the people are acting irrational, and emotions are super high. Um, and so how'd you lateral from that PD job over to the Secret Service? So this, back in the day, this the Secret Service is still in Treasury before they went to DHS because this is pre-9-11. Um, we worked, like I said, with those, those agents. I loved it. Uh, I wanted to be a federal agent anyway. So back then, <laughs> this is funny now because everything's online. Like I literally used an electric typewriter and like had a packet of stuff, walked it into the Kansas City field office and gave it to them and go out, you know, this is how you start the process. Well, back then, the, the special agent in charge is like, come to my office and just talk to me. It was really informal. Hmm. Now, all he wanted to do was just give me a chat because there was – now it's a lot more formalized and how the hiring process is done. You got to go USA, uh, gov, Jobs, job, yeah. gov or whatever. Um, very different back then. And what here's what, Now, here's the fucked up part. Um, I went through the whole process. Right? It's a year long process uh, of just it, application. Just well, the application. No, the application. Then they do a background check. Yeah. They do some testing. You do a PT test. This is back. This, like I said, back in the ni- late nineties. Um, and uh, there's a lot of similarities, a lot of differences. Then we do a polygraph, and the polygraph's like four and a half, five hours. I'm telling the truth. Is it, it a lifestyle poly or a criminal poly? It's a little. Well, it's it's a. Um, I don't know the difference. It, it basically covers everything. It covers a lot of things, lifestyle, like yeah. it's going to cover drug use. So like security clearance polys, there's there's ones where they're just going to ask you like professional jobs. There's other ones where they're going to dig into your this, lifestyle. This is everything. This is yeah. life. Uh, this is everything from, um, you know, have you committed a, have you, have you got an act if you had been caught doing, that you weren't caught doing, that if you had been, would have been a felony. So let's say you- What st- if your answer is probably because you're not sure? Yeah, it's all yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, maybe because I've done some really you, stupid shit. So, you, and that's just the thing. Also, but when they prep you for that, they're like, you know, yes or no. And so I'm like, well, and that's what I'm thinking in my yeah. head is like, well, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. <laughs> there is a my gray answer area. is C. <laughs> yeah, I had the same reaction. So anyway, I passed the poly. So I they had been convinced I was lying. I was like, God, is there something in my self subconscious? Because it wasn't like I was a Pollyanna in college, but I, I didn't do drugs or anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, um, I was just excessive. Um, and so I passed it. They, they, they go out to my, uh, the PD and one of my sergeants goes, I never had them visit the PD without the guy getting hired. So I'm feeling really good about myself. I'm like, I got this. I get a letter <laughs> and it says, basically said better qualified applicants got it or something like that. Like I said, I didn't get the job after going through over a year of this. I'm convinced I have it. So I got my hopes way up. So I handled it with a lack of grace that I, <laughs> that I previously was known for. And I was just like, you know, fuck it. I went on, you know, it's like for, I was like, I broke up with my girlfriend. I was just like, you know, whatever. You just went out and wrote yeah. a grip of parking tickets, <laughs> fucking speeding tickets that day. Nobody's getting off. Yeah. No discretion no here, fucking pal. Fucking warnings for you, asshole. <laughs> you got, I got you for five over. Yeah. yeah. You're one mile an hour over the speed limit. Don't worry about my radar gun. It's plus or minus three. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so long story short, this uh, ASAC uh, uh, at the, in Kansas City, he hits me up about six months. He goes, hey, Mark, I don't know why they didn't hire you. I, I strongly urge you to reapply. Reapplied. I never heard of this happening to anybody else. Reapplied. They kind of did a background check to make sure I hadn't, to thank God during my- uh, Yeah, made sure nothing my, changed. My meltdown, I didn't uh, do anything stupid. But, uh, and then, then I got hired eventually. And and then I you know went to the Secret Service and in training at, at, at Fletzy, my second yep. day was 9-11. So- How was that? It was. I so feel we, like you guys probably didn't train much that day. No, we didn't train for like several days after that. <laughs> yeah. It was so we were in the classroom when it happened, and this is our second day. It was Tuesday, obviously. It was the second day. Then what do you do on the first day? Like paperwork? Like, yeah, I think it probably shit. I don't remember. I was twenty seven, probably. We. I don't know what that we did in the first. Day. We, I, it had to been like, we probably got uniforms yeah. and stuff like almost nothing. Like an like, admin like processing orientation, day, orientation, things like that. This is down in the, the uh, federal law enforcement training center down it, in Glenhu. And so this and 9-11 happens and we go out or somebody walks into the classroom. It's like some a plane ran into the 
World Trade Center. And we're thinking like a Cessna or something. That's what I thought too. Yeah. And so we keep going. And mind you, there's an NYP, former NYPD guy in there. And we're like, then it said somebody just blew up the second or something like that. And like we all go out into the hall and there's these mounted TVs. Uh, and we're all, you can imagine the, all kinds of different agencies all looking up all these yeah. trainees. And it's like it dawns on you real fast. Um, now, we were super motivated after that, as you can imagine. So even we, though we had no classes for a few days, like every, we were training, we were PTN like crazy because everybody was fired up. Um, but yeah, it really put a, uh, so once we got out and we, you know, we were out of training, I go to the Chicago field office and we were busy as hell because we had picked up all kinds of protectees after 9-11 because you know how, you remember how it was that it's like everybody's like, what's coming next? You know, people, young people, it's funny now because I have young agents I work with who, they were too young to even remember it. Yeah. And uh, uh, what people don't realize then was just how paranoid the country was. Like, we were just expecting for another attack to happen. Well, it was such a um, – not that there, you know, the World Trade Center had been blown up from underneath before. Yeah. There had been terrorist attacks. But for as far as complexity and kind of – well, so it's just about to say it was kind of out of left field. Looking in the rearview mirror, twenty plus years, it seems like a lot of the data was there, but it wasn't yeah. filtered yeah. appropriately. Yeah. So it wasn't really out of left field, but we'll say, as far as like your average civilian, yeah, they went from ne- probably never thinking about that to mm-hmm. going, oh fuck, yeah. if that can happen, yeah, what else could possibly happen? Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody. Because nobody- well, don't forget the threat levels. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah. The dumbest fucking idea. <laughs> Today's an orange day. Everybody's just like in Starbucks, like, yeah, guys are coming. Which out. one of you motherfuckers is Osama bin Laden? Like. Fuck. But the guys, the guys are like, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like Mad Max. The guy's got spikes coming out of his like shoulder pads. It's like, come Do on. Do you people. remember that Let's shit, cool Michael? I was one. Yeah, see, when that's, 9/11 we have, happened. We have agents. So no, we have agents. That, I mean, for, and good agents for a couple of years. Young. For a couple of years, on all the major news networks, they would put a, a threat code. Every fucking day and talk about it. I'm not joking, dude. Like today is an amber day or they'd get intel like it would be like a red day. But they would give you no other information about it. So they're basically just scaring the shit out of people. Yeah, They're just kind of randomly saying, I guess it's red today. Well, they would have intelligence of some kind, but they're obviously not going to share the intelligence or how they got it. They'd just be like on Fox News or CNN. Mm -hmm. Today we're at an amber alert. People are just like, literally just like a fucking Osama bin Laden's here at the subway sandwich shop with me. Like, it was so stupid. It was a very strange. Well, the thing is, we had just, in our lifetime, I, we never experienced anything like that. Like yeah. this gener- that generation just like, wait a second, I mean, something that drastic from overseas. Uh, like even after the uh, Oklahoma City bombing, which we lost agents because uh, our, our office was in that building. Oh, that's right. The yeah. building. So I, I can't remember the number, unfortunately. Did they we, kill that motherfucker yet? McVeigh, I don't know. Didn't he get the? Uh, didn't he get the? Did somebody kill him? In, I hope somebody killed him in prison I'm look with a dick. <laughs> Just fucked his face right until he died. Uh, Timothy, I, f- I feel like he was executed. Maybe it's, I think you're right. I think you're I think right. he got that the death penalty. Right. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Uh, it says final statement, so I'm guessing June 11th, 2001 was his death yeah, date. Yeah, so that happened in 94, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I was in college in that Did they happened. execute him, Michael? I could see Oklahoma executing a motherfucker. You don't think it would take long in Oklahoma. You wouldn't think. Um, of course, it was federal. So, well, federal, I don't know how to well, fix that. That was definitely a federal crime. Yeah, that's a federal crime. So but I, I wonder know. if it's the state that you commit the federal crime in that will actually execute the, the death sentence. Because some I states don't, don't allow for it. You're just going to get life without yeah, the possibility of parole. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. That's a good Executed question. by lethal injection. Yeah. Well, I hope that they fucked that up and it was super painful. Yeah, you hope there's, yeah, you hope there's a guy. way to... Um, Fuck that guy. Yeah. I mean, but remember at the time, though, the difference between that and 9-11, at least from our... I mean, I remember being in college and we saw that. We're like, holy shit. Once again, we hadn't seen it. Yeah. Probably the closest tragedy was the Challenger in my lifetime before... Yep. The federal building. I watched that live in middle school. I was in sixth grade when it happened. They wheeled in, in the strapped yeah, TV. Yeah, on top of the roll. Yeah, they did And it blew up, thing. and they're like, well, just wheel that out. And also, your parents are on your way to get you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, was in, I think I was in Miss Springer's class in like sixth grade when it happened. Yeah. It's funny how that stuff gets in, st- stamped on you like I'll that. be honest. I remember the setup of the TV more than anything. Yeah, like remember, It was like yeah, the classic was public classic school. 80s. Yeah, totally. It's like they moved the overhead projection Fuck. screen away yeah. so they could put the TV there. And when the TV comes out, it's usually like, hell yeah, we're going to have It was have supposed these to be days. awesome. It was supposed to be awesome. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're gonna, either going to get a video or you knew that day it's Challenger. And of course, it was t- it was the, the teacher. Um, oh, 
Oh, fuck, Kolof. that's right. That's Mikolof, right. right? Was her last name? The teacher that was on board that? Michael's like, what's this challenger? Is this Buzz Lightyear? Yeah. Or like, oh, I, I know what it is. God, I hope her name you don't right. know shit, Michael. <laughs> but uh, yeah, was, that was, that was, that's why that's, it was so big for the schools. Yeah. Because... Um, yeah, they, had, they were putting a teacher into space. Yeah. So. And uh, of course, in the '80s, they didn't bring. It, there were no counselors for the children to <laughs> get over their trauma. But uh, yeah, that was, was a wild one. We just moved. It was it was crazy. And then how people remembered that's crazy because also it felt like at the time it felt the, the, the shuttle program felt so invincible because they had so many successes. And then this one happens, and I think it was McCullough. But yeah, that's what I, I think that's what her last name was. I'm looking it up right now. See if I can find it. Yeah, wild. So. How long is the uh, Secret Service Academy? So you do three months down in Fletzy. Uh, that's basically a police academy for a guy who had been yeah. through a cop. It was kind of like a you know, review. Um, and then you go to Beltsville, and there's a the rally training center in Beltsville, Maryland. They do a lot of protection and other stuff. There's also investigations, but more geared to what we do specifically, not generally. Um, so it's six months. And then you're off to your field office, start your investigative stuff, and your phase one. And in phase two, protection. I've had a weird career because I got done with the presidential protection. I've been staying in just protection for like 15 years. That's a little unusual. Usually you'll go to headquarters, which I, I'll never do, frankly. Yeah, hold on. Let's... Krista yeah, was, Chris, McAuliffe. Yeah, yeah, Krista McAuliffe. Okay, that's her last. I knew, I, I thought, I'm just glad I got her last name correct. That's her on the left, far left. But uh, just tragic. Because it was supposed to be kind of like a celebratory thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it had uh, deep ties to the educational system. system. So a lot yeah, of kids lot were of, sitting there watching that shit go down And live. also, it was, I think, I, I don't know what, I mean, NASA, there was a lot of PR leading up to it because of her being on there. Yeah. Because the shuttle, remember, the shuttle launchers became really common, it seemed like, when back in the 80s. I mean, I was a little kid, but. Yeah. Yeah, we watched that one live, Michael. It wasn't even on like 1080p, though. It was like. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm watching the video right now. It's pretty low quality yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was the 80s yeah 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 it was like it was like well, some of us were alive in the 80s michael <laughs> i think it was 86 if i'm not yeah. mistaken yeah. um been nine. Like yeah i was uh yeah i was sixth grade what that. job would you have wanted to have in the secret service you never got the chance to do or were, were there any did really you have the not. chance to I, go I, you know i got what i wanted I, I you know when i first got the presidential protection division that was a big deal i really wanted to do that uh, it was cool um, also having a historic president like President Obama to protect for five years, five and a half years, I guess. Um, I got to be a supervisor on the vice presidential protection division with Pence. And I went there to do protection. I didn't go there not to be non-operational. So it's been fun. And I, I'd, I've done other stuff. But I, honestly, I mean, I really, really, there's nothing. I mean, the counter assault team would have been cool. Yeah. They were, and they were, they were great guys. And they work. You know, I think of all the people in the Secret Service, they train hard. They have a, they're in high demand all the time. They're always getting tapped with more stuff. And you, as you know, it's like there's never enough. It's like yeah. there's just never. And you're seeing that throughout law enforcement. There's just the agencies. If you go around the country, um, and it's just you know every agency, every law enforcement agency just needs more people. Um, and of course, like we were talking about earlier, you need quality people because you're the law, and so you're the representative of the state. You don't want people doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. So it's a it's a hard deal to do. To, do you think that counterfeiting has gone up in volume or down in the digital world? Uh, down. Uh, I don't like I said. I haven't been in investigations yeah. in a long time, but I just know talking to. It seems like a lot of people just don't use cash. No, no. And a lot of people, we go out, when you go out to the field, that's, or we hear about the big cases, you know, I'll read about the big cases that, that the field offices have done and that the, the investigative sections have done. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not like we get people are, I think there's a lot of overseas stuff, though. There are yeah. some of the, there's some of that kind of fuckery going on uh, with different countries. Um, but like I said, it's not my forte, but just anecdotally talking to the other agents, it's just seeing the cases they've worked. Of course, for a while, there, there's a lot of, um, um, you know, yeah, everything's done electronically nowadays. Yeah, and there's still, and believe it or not, there's still scams going on all over the place and, and those type of things. So, um, some of the scams that people fall for, yeah, they worry me for their intelligence level. Yeah, well, and, and a lot of those people too, they they go for vulnerable people. They just because they you know they go out there and they just throw out the net and see what they catch. And well, they wouldn't throw out the net if it didn't work to some degree. Really, exactly. No, you're right. Yeah, some of the stuff you see, like I see, you'll get the email scams or, I love it. Like hello. Good sir. Yeah. I am a Jordanian prince and I have put $24 million in your <laughs> yeah. account for you. I'm like, fuck, I've been waiting for this email my whole life. 
they wouldn't write that shit if there weren't people that fell for it. Yeah. Well, that's just it. And, and it's and, like, how the fuck do you fall for that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes it's older people, lo- lonely older people, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. Maybe sometimes it, I think it is just dim-witted people. But maybe th- at 80, you shouldn't get the internet anymore. Yes. That's probably true. You know? Or, yeah. Or somebody should help you with these decisions. But that's the problem. I think people are making these decisions on their, on their own. And, you know, human frailty, all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh yeah, but if you're falling for that kind of thing, I think a lot of times there's got to be something else going on. It, if, if you fall for it just for lack of intelligence, there's a real issue. You better have there's some other issue going on. But again, what's their return on like the net they're throwing? I mean, it can't be that. Oh, fuck, I have no idea have how no idea people either. create the, create it, but they have to be getting enough response that's positive for them yeah. that they're that they are doing it. Yeah. No, I I, I agree. No, it's got to be lucrative on some level, and you know. Like the stuff that's happening overseas, a lot of those guys probably don't have much money anyway. That's probably the most yeah. lucrative thing they can do. Uh, so if, you know, even if a person sends over two thousand dollars for that guaranteed twenty grand they're going to get, and then they never hear from them, uh, or whatever the case is, two thousand dollars for a guy in you know Nigeria or somewhere, it's pretty good money. <sighs> good advice for people is don't send money to anybody. Yes, on the internet. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. If you're Venmoing somebody, Venmo somebody you know well. Verify that. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard what uh, is getting people now is AI voice calls, uh-huh. like replicating uh, yeah, calls for help. I did hear about that. That's scary. That's super scary. That's super scary. And that's, yeah, that, and you, and in that case, I guess they would have, like, for instance, if you, if my brother hit me up and it yeah. sounds just like my brother, he sounds just like me, frankly. Um, that would be you'd be far more likely to, to yeah, fall for that. Like, if, yeah. like if Michael, his, his phone number showed up, or dude. Something. If Michael called me one day, I was like, Andy, somebody's going to kill me unless you give me five hundred bucks. I'd be like, kill that motherfucker, obviously, <laughs> right? But five hundred. But that would be tough, right? <laughs> like, most I'll give you two. I mean, the software out there. I watched a podcast. <laughs> I forget. It was uh, it was Rogan and somebody else, but it was a multi hour podcast that they never did. Yeah, and they were sitting there having a conversation, and it wasn't perfect. But if that's like V one, yeah, in five years, and you can't yeah. tell, that's a, that's, that's a different type of counterfeit. Well, all that all that stuff is scary because images and how the how sophisticated it's getting, how fast it's getting, yeah, it's snowballing, and it is scary. I, like when I heard that too, it's the same thing. Especially would that type of counterfeit fall into the Secret Service purview? I would. Imagine, that's more of a scam. So I don't know. Yeah. If that, well, here's the thing: is I mean, there's a lot of crossover. I mean, the FBI investigates this. It's not with the sole agency doing these things. Yeah. Um, and the FBI is much, much larger than we larger than we are. I mean, that's the other thing people for, don't realize is that we're not very big. Never have been. How many sworn? Uh, I don't know what the number are numbers are now, but I think back in the day we used to always we used the the rule of thumb was we were always agent wise. I think just agents. I think was three thousand to thirty three hundred. That is smaller than I thought. It's very small. And I don't know what the numbers are. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what, you know, over, because you have uniform division, uh, the agents, of course, all the admin staff. There's also, we have uh, PSTs, which are uh, like security technicians. They do, a lot of those guys do driving. I mean, they're armed and they're, and they do a lot of the stuff with like the transportation section, driving and all kinds of other things. So there's all kinds of positions there, uh, special officers. I, don't, I think they still have special officers. They may have changed that name. Um, but uh, so there's a lot more people. But once again, compared to like the FBI and other agencies, not that big. And that's why um, when we do, uh, you know, let's say when we do protection, we work really strongly with pol- local police, oh, yeah. military. Yeah. One thing we, we play well with others because, A, we have to uh, because we to do our mission. Yeah, we're, we're the ones coordinating all this. We're the professionals that are, that are charged with doing this. But we have he- lots of help. Um, and. That's why we work really well, and I think we have great relationships with those groups because of that. I mean, it's it's really emphasized in our culture, frankly. It's like play well with others. We need their help. We need to build those relationships because yep. it's it's well. If nine eleven showed anything, it showed the vulnerability of not playing well with others. Yeah, because like I yeah. said, in hind and I don't, I, I'm I'm not uh, throwing judgment at anybody who was operating in that system twenty plus years ago, but. In you know, with the hindsight now, it's like fuck, man. A lot of those data points were kind of there. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, the hindsight, and that's you know, once again, reactionary. It goes back to that yeah. same thing. We we were reacting to the mistakes. We react to, um, and you know, it, and people had the information. It, it, so much information was there. It wasn't like we were it was completely. We were blind to it. That's it. Just we didn't put the pieces together. 
Well, if it was anything like the uh, SEAL teams pre-9-11, absent an enemy, we just fought each other. <laughs> and by that, I mean we were fighting for relevancy with budget. Yeah. And so because there was a limited budget, teams were focusing on like geographic areas in the world. They mm. weren't sharing best practices. They weren't sharing intel, which is fine until something happens and yeah. then you all need to work together. And you're like, oh, shit, we yeah. don't speak the same language anymore. Yeah. Which yeah. can be dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then, yeah, and sometimes maybe being static like that does that. It creates that that issue. Yeah, uh, it's almost better to be busy, uh, have think, have have a have you know have a focus for your mission so that you don't focus on the BS, the other BS. You yeah. Know? Um, Where uh, so you've been at it for a while. Where'd the idea for the book come about? Um, when did you decide to actually put metaphorical pen to paper? Because I know you write on a laptop. <laughs> yeah. Because you were in the coffee shop yeah. writing your second um, book today. So yes, so Fence Jumper came to mind. I've been so I've been a reader. And I was been a writer since I was a kid. Uh, Fence Jumper came to mind. I was like, I, I I kind of had started to stop with some ideas for a novel, and then I'm like, I'm in the gym and going, let's start with a Secret Service agent suspended for a sex scandal in South America. So <laughs> why did you just pull something directly from the headlines, though? I mean, like you should have gone with something made up. It is made up. I mean, I, the fuck it is. Well, no, <laughs> it's a completely different country. It's a completely different country. But it, it but, very. But it was it was inspired yeah. by that. So what happens yeah. is, I come up with the idea. A uh, suspended Secret Service agent. Um, he finds a kid, a, a wife, a wife of a senator. The senator's running for a primary election for the presidency. Has her wife kidnapped? She escapes from the kidnappers. The Secret Service guy finds her. They start investigating it, and basically, it's a satire. Are you, I know. If, are you really aware of uh, Carl Hyacin novels by no, chance? No, not at all. So Carl Hyacin, a uh, real successful novelist, writes quirky, funny mysteries set in Florida. He's, I think, he works for the Miami Herald or something. Anyway, he kind of inspired me for this because it's it's a humorous political thriller. It's had great feedback. Uh, Actually, National Security Advisor, former National Security Advisor of Robert O'Brien for Trump, read it, called it the Veep uh, meets uh, House of Cards. So, um, it's not a bad endorsement. No, no, it's a great endorsement. And uh, I was like, God damn, I wish I had thought of that. That's a great sum summation. But so basically, uh, there's a lot more to it than that. I've had the, the feedback's been fantastic. It ends up being um, they start investigating it themselves, but then there's a Metro cop, there's Russian agents. Um, and uh, it kind of makes fun of Washington D.C. today, in in a real even-handed way. Yeah, uh, and it's really satirical, and it's been really good. To, in, in, you know, being you know having been in Washington for so long, you know, it gives up, it lends it some credibility. But I I did my due diligence. I I took the legal. They read it. I took it to our folks with the uh, media relations. Um, did they ask you to change anything? Did no, you? I mean that's what I'm, the one thing I'll say about the Secret Service because I was a little nervous about that. I mean, I'm writing this. I go, I don't. I don't know where this is going to go. The one thing about writing fiction that I learned is it's all in your head. So I don't know if it's working. I'm putting it down, but I don't know if it's if, if you read it, if you would get the same the reaction I want you to get or whatever. What process did you follow when you were writing? So I had several scenes in my head initially. And so what I did is I'm more of, I'm not a plot over, I don't over plot it. I have ideas of where I'm going to go. And then I start writing down these ideas and then I take it. I have, I have an idea where I'm going with it, but I don't know quite frankly how the hell i'm going to get there quite yet which to me with writing that's more fun now i understand i could be wrong about this i'm a fan of jack carr as well yep and i've read what he's done and he's a much more of a plotter it sounds like where he really gets into that um but yeah mine is as i'm going but i had several scenes in my head and and then i, I try to work i worked that in but then i start creating characters i had some characters but then, then some care oh this is what you know, I'm thinking of my time. So it took me about four and a half years to write. That's what I was going to say. Did you? So did you write every day? Did you set like a word goal for yourself yeah. every day? What a I chapter. Did, yeah. So what I did is because obviously I'm not a full time writer. I'm, I have this, my real job. Uh, what I would do is I would go in spurts sometimes. But mm -hmm. what I, would, I would try to make it. It got to a point where it's like treat it like a workout. Even if you feel like not going to the gym that day, uh, force yourself to start writing. Some days. You might get 100 words. Other days, you might get 560 words. But keep at it. Also, I found, and every writer will tell you this, is that consistency, just like a workout, consistency is more important, really. Yeah. Like you can have, you can have like your, a really killer workout and wait five days, have a killer workout, but you're better off just all those five days have good workouts each day. You're actually better off having a mediocre workout yes. each day than a huge valley in between yes. the two. Yes, exactly. And, and writing's the same way because it, it is a muscle. And because you're using a different part of your brain as far as, a writer is concerned than you would as an agent or even in the military. Uh, it's just a different thing. And it's, and I'm learning all this as I'm going. So by the time I, um, I got done, I'm like, I just feel pr pretty good. And, and 
uh, you met uh, Eddie's husband. Yeah. He was the first. So I've known him for 20 years um, or more, maybe. And he was the first one to read it. And he goes, Mark, this is pretty fucking good. And I'm like, you think so? And because, I mean, because the one thing the other I've learned about doing something like this is it, it brings out you become a neurotic. So now I understand actors and artists more because it's like you always give it to him going, you going to like it because you don't know. Once again, I didn't know if it worked. Well, I was going to ask you, too. How did you know it was done? I, I knew what I was trying to get to. So Fence Jumper, the, I had one of the ideas I had was was the ending. Right. And so if I, I knew if I could get there. But the question was, how do I get there? And then I started. And what's funny is I got to a certain point. I'm like, oh, because at the towards the end, I want the I want the pace to really pick up. Because mm-hmm. I'll tell you about the satire and humor, but it, does, it actually gets really fast paced. That's why I call it a humorous uh, political thriller. Um, how many total words? Uh, Ninety five thousand words. Okay. So, and this copy's for you, by the way. So, okay. I mean, if you I don't know if you have time, you probably don't have time to read because you're busy. But it makes I got a, a flight gr- tomorrow. I got okay. five hours in the Minneapolis right. St. Paul it also airport. Also makes a great doorstop. You know, <laughs> paperweight. No, you'll. I think you'll enjoy it because you got a good sense of humor and uh, and and people have said that's. I mean, I feel like it. it'll be very similar to Jack's novels, and yeah. by that I mean. From somebody who comes from the world that he comes from, yeah. people probably don't realize he his books are nonfiction, yeah. but they lean heavily on very accurate descriptions of equipment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, I've, I've read, t- I've read, I've read, I read the first three of his Terminalist series, yeah. and I, I watched the series obviously. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, he gets way into it. He's a big time into the gear. It's like fiction esque, yeah. Yeah. And I bet you drew from a lot of your real life yes. experience, which would allow people, especially like Eddie's yeah. husband, right? Chance, he's like, huh, this rings very true. Yeah. And a lot of people felt that way. And uh, even, well, even like when uh, uh, National Security Advisor O'Brien, Ambassador O'Brien, uh, it was really nice of when he read it. Cause I was like, first of all, I didn't know he'd read it. But when he did and he told me how much he liked it, I was blown away because he's a super bright guy. Yeah. I knew he had a good sense of humor. Uh, but he really, really, really liked it. And uh, that, you know, when you hear stuff like that, nothing for a writer makes you feel better and gives you confidence. Then you're like, OK, I have something here. Um, yeah. And I even had a, believe it or not, I got a, a former special agent in charge, retired now from the Secret Service. He was a special agent in charge of, the, of PPD one time. He read it and hit me up and, and, and had a really nice compliment. And uh, that was, you know, I was like blown away because I had no idea he was even reading it. So that's the that's when writing is fun is when people do that and um, reach out to you and say, um, hey, what you're doing is good. You have a gift. Uh, keep at it. And then, So where does it go from there? So you get your 95,000 words. You realize it's done. You pass it over to Evie's husband for a read. Yeah, and several how people does it, read, Yeah. How do you find a publisher? How did that's you get it hard, to... Well, that's the hard part. Um, and that's the <laughs> shittiest part of it. You know, because at the time, I'm, you know, I'm 49 now. You know, 49-year-old, first-time writer. It took me over a year to find. So I'm, I'm trying to get a, a literary agent. If, mm-hmm. So if anybody wants a good agent out there wants to read it, and uh, so <laughs> I'm I'm available. So you're still in the process. So then, I'm still yeah. in the process. So what ends up happening? It got published by a, a smaller publisher, um, eventually because they liked they had the manuscript. They liked it. It's a smaller publisher. Uh, so, but you can still get through Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and those places. Um, but it's to, I see it as a way to get started because yeah. it's, it's, you only can wait so long. It's like and then it's like okay, and, and it's you know. The thing I've learned, I've learned a lot about the business, and it's just super competitive. There's a lot of people writing out there, yeah. and it's hard to stand out. Um, like I said, having my bio and stuff, just like uh, uh, Jack's uh, car's bio, it's like that lends you credibility, but you still got to fucking write. And you still got to yeah, be You can good. have the best bio in the world. If, yeah. you, if you plop out a piece of shit, yeah. people aren't going to want to read no it. It makes no fucking difference. And that's why it took so long, and it's all about revisions. And I'm learning as I go. And my feeling on it was, I and mean, that was my mantra when I was writing. It's like, I go, if it's the worst fucking work of fiction ever, just finish it. It. Just finish yeah. the goddamn thing, and we'll see what happens. And so, luckily, it, it's not the worst <laughs> bit of fiction yet. Um, so, uh, no, I've been I've been very encouraged. But it's it's only been a couple months, but it's doing for you know, you know, for for that period of time for the, the size of publisher and for a guy who's never done this and has no real platform. It's been good. So, so Jack's series obviously falls around James Reese, yeah, uh, the protagonist. Yes. What's your who? What's the so, protagonist in your book? It's James Ford, 
which is close, but it, James Ford, so it comes from Ford. So when I was a kid, I'm not making this shit up. It's in the preface. So when I was a kid, I would write these stories about this guy, James Ford. James is my middle name. Ford is the last name of my favorite actor, Harrison Ford. Yep. That's how I came up with the name. It was that simple. And so when I decided to write my first novel, I was like, and he was a cowboy when I was a kid, of course, when I was writing that in like third grade or whatever. Uh, but when I decided to write this, I got, I got to make it James Ford. Also, it's a cool, you know, there's one syllable, syllable names, you know, James Bond, um, yeah. Jack, you know, it's usually these, uh, Nick Rapp, all these thrillers have these kind of one syllable, uh, first and last names that kind of punch you in the face. And so, and then Kat Sterling is the female character in it. Uh, I've had female readers love it because of that dynamic between them. Cause also the, all the characters are fucked up in this. Like he's a, kind of a, obviously a cad, kind of a mess, drinks too much. Um, so you just pulled it right out of real life. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> I told you it's very realistic. <laughs> so I'm saying that's what I love like a, about Jack's I, novels. Yeah, this is fiction. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of thing. So, uh, but it, but it's fine. I, I went into it. I wanted everybody to be flawed. I'd like the kidnappers are these uh, kind of redneck uh, folks. The president who has a small role, you'll probably recognize. He tweets in it. Um, Weird. So, Wonder who that could be. Yeah. It's it's out there. But yeah. uh, but once again. I did my due diligence. I made, and that's why I was wondering what, but nothing in there. And I, I purposely made him a suspended agent because I, I didn't want him working in a capacity uh, as a federal agent because I didn't want to get tripped up. Yeah. And also made the president in a, a very minor role, almost a supporting role, just almost kind of the background. Uh, it's really, it's really. Of course, I have a Republican senator from West Virginia, Democrat senator from California. Um, so I, I kind of make fun of everything from the media to, uh, uh, you know. And it's funny to, uh, what is it, like identity politics, I make fun of a little bit. But the other thing is, uh, I tried to be even handed so that you wouldn't know where my political links are. And yeah. I think I, I think I did that. Uh, because, but what's funny about DC is you write something that's absurd, and it is absurd in many ways. And then DC plays out and it's like, it's not, not it could happen. This is really plausible. <laughs> so I've only been to DC a few times, but like it, in my mind, I see DC as like our entire political system. Yeah. Absurd is the only term that you could use for it. Yeah. Like at this point, I don't know if it's worth anything other than just making fun of. Yeah. I, I have uh, <laughs> concerns. Yeah. I'm really yeah. not looking forward to uh, yeah. the next presidential cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, no, I get that, and uh, it's uh, it's and we're, you know the thing is the Secret Service we're already gearing up for that. Uh, they're already do, putting into place uh, teams and things like that, and tra doing training to prepare for the next campaign. And of course, you can imagine what a shit show. I mean, for an agent, that's when. I mean, there are some guys I know who, at times, if they're able to retire and they don't know a campaign's coming up, they're like, "This is the time to pop smoke. I'm not doing another campaign." Yeah. And I don't fault, them, especially guys that's been on a long time. It's, just, the... it's very demanding. When in the campaign process do candidates pick up Secret Service protection? So there's no, uh, and, and once again, so there's no rhyme, there's no, there's no clear cut way yeah. how that works. So basically, we got the primaries coming up. Obviously, well, nobody, a lot of people are they'll be coming up. Well, I guess early next year. Um, so you'll start seeing people in this year because Trump still has his. Uh, he still has like, of, secret, yeah, detail, you know, he has yeah. like full details. Yeah, so that's what I'm good. saying. So he's same with when Hillary ran. Hillary had full which, detail too. Full detail. So that's actually for us kind of a helpful if he if he's a nominee because that's if it's somebody else. Let's say some other Republican. Yeah, we're gonna have to put forward a detail, especially if they're going, and uh, you know, depending on when we pick them up. So depending on intelligence and a bunch of other. Uh, issues and you can imagine. So when I was in Chicago in 2008, when Obama comes out of nowhere, super charismatic, um, is going to get the, the, the nomination uh, for the Democratic nomination. But he the, had no detail before that. No, he was so he was a state senator and just he wasn't a senator very long. But he yeah. was so popular because he nailed it during one of the conventions, and so he was a big rising star. But also, he's the first you know African American, legit African American. A, you know, with a legit chance of winning yeah. the presidency. So, obviously, there was some intel. So we picked them up really early. Um, so those type of things. And there's, I'm not sure of all the mechanisms, but I yeah. know that uh, there's there's a lot of other people involved in because uh, you couldn't uh, do them all. It's like holy no, shit, no you got to wait until it narrows itself and, down at least and, a little bit. And, and it's funny because yeah, and, and like I said, I'm not I'm at the, I'm not at the table when these ideas are being floated, but uh, I don't know. I guess I don't know what. Uh, I'd be curious to know what age, like what 
what candidates want Secret Service protection and some who may not. I want the flexibility to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. And, you know, because we don't screw. I mean, we we can facilitate a lot of things, but I would imagine as a candidate, you might have a little more flexibility without us. I think it probably just depends on the person. But we also easier to move. But we also make you look presidential, which is kind of a nice thing. Uh, we do a lot of logistics, yeah, which is a nice nice thing. But uh, 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 but I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's going to be. It's just a weird time with the partisanship and the uh, the back and forth, and I, it, it's hard to say how it's going to play out. But obviously, we're all curious about how it'll play out. You know, that's not the word I would choose for myself. Well, <laughs> I'm fucking dreading the next presidential election. Yeah, well, that's how, and that's how, you know, and we're hoping, and we always, you know, as the regular, you know, the, the guys on the ground and girls on the ground, agents like myself, are always like. Um, yeah, we're hoping we don't pick up too many people because when you pick, there have been times in the past we've picked up several, and it does it makes a hard because you understand every time they go somewhere we have advanced teams, advanced yeah. agents. So uh, you're not it's not like we're just hopping on a plane and you know flying somewhere blindly. We're planning ahead. So you see somebody do five campaign stops and that's just one candidate. Now imagine now say you have three or four candidates, yeah. you can you can see how quickly how quickly your your manpower is. And it used to be. Uh, detail for life correct for presidents and now it's 10 years well it's 10 years i i feel like that's it's 10 years but i think that started with bush but it's it, all it takes is a stroke of a pen i think from the sitting president so i, I don't change. think realistically that's really on paper smaller maybe, detail though right as they get older yeah, i'm assuming not, like it's nothing no nothing like the, there's nothing like the presidential detail yeah and the vice president vp detail is not as big obviously manpower wise is because of the all the things that go with it but it's pretty it's still really large those are the two biggest details by far um, but you know, the president and the, the former first, the former president and the former first ladies both get protection. Hmm. Um, so for life, pretty much, I mean, I, I, like I said, I'd be surprised if, um, uh, if that changes, even though the law changed. So maybe I'm wrong because, you know, sometimes these folks have, even if they have enough money to pay for their protection, I think what's probably going to happen, and this is just me speaking, I'm not speaking for the U S secret service. It's just, yeah. just my personal feeling is that it's just going to stay basically the way it was like you said stroke of a pen for the sitting president can probably change a few things yeah i mean if an executive order can do a lot of things i mean uh we you know if there is a uh, particular intelligence about you know former uh, players in the previous administration uh it, it doesn't take much to uh to to get protection from us in those cases and so you know you know once again wherever they tell us to go we do it and yeah yeah. What's your favorite part about the job? Ooh, well, I think it's a little bit like I love the traveling experiences I've had, and I love the people. I really do like the, especially in the big details. I was very fortunate. I had really good shifts I worked with. I came really close with people in the transportation section and in um, uh, on my shift on the lifelong friends and uh, uh, and I think that's that's the part. Of, of course, I think anything whether it's a football team, the SEAL teams or any other any organization you've been with a long time that's the thing that matters the most i love the travel but i loved being a part of it it was kind of cool like i said even at the end when you're burnt out and you're ready to get off the president's detail like i said you're when you land on the air force one and you're pulling up there in the tarmac and you see the crowds and you go out the back of uh, air force one and i say it in fence jumper i said i kind of describe it as it's like the closest thing for me was being in the tunnel before the football game you know mm -hmm. you're about to go out the tunnel and you go out there and you're part of the show to a degree because everybody's fascinated by us with their, you know, the badass sunglasses and the earpiece. You know, it's kind of a mystique to it, which is why when if we do something wrong, it's such a big news story. And people still have that. And we get as far as law enforcement agency goes, I think we get treated really well because of that, because people yeah. show up. We're not there to break up your party. We're there because we're protecting the guy you're voting for. And so we get treated, I think, pretty well by the public. So I liked all of it. I mean. When it's all said and done, I'll be like my dad was a pilot in the Air Force, a pilot for American Airlines. Um, um, and my dad, by the way, turns ninety this fall. My mom's eighty-five, so hi, mom and dad. If they're they're probably asleep by now in this podcast, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll listen. No, they're excited about yeah. it. But anyway, the uh, it'll be um, I'll be that guy talking about his job when I'm old age. That's that's what guys do, you know. Well, it was a very unique job. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess all jobs are unique to a degree, but some of them are just not even open or available Yeah, for people. Like we described, you know, the, the background check in and of itself, obviously not perfect. I mean, people yeah. slide through yeah. those. 
the poly is a unique one and just the proximity to a job that few people ever have a true understanding of yeah it's it's yeah for sure and, and that's the reason why i think um you know uh yeah it, it, it's it's it, that's the reason why there was you know our association with obviously with the president vice president uh that's why we have the reputation we have and we've been doing well for the, at least the last 40 years so hopefully we keep uh, having wins and and if you want to apply, there's plenty of space open. So young young folks who are listening to this, who are interested in this, go to usajobs.gov. Um, have fun go, with that process. Yeah, have fun with <laughs> that process. But it's, I hope they know that that it's a good job. And if you want to do something exciting, unique, and you want something when you're done, you're when you're done with your career, that you can say with pride that you did that. You know, you, there's a lot of jobs. Yeah, I took the easy way or whatever. You can say with pride that I did. I did a tough job. I did a necessary job that very, very few people get to do. And not, but a lot of people, not a lot of people can say that, you know, when they yeah. retire, not a lot of people can look back and go, I did that. That's pretty, that's pretty fucking cool. I drove the president. That's pretty awesome. I was on air force one and, uh, and you know, a lot of people can say that. And the problem is old time agents like myself sometimes lose sight of that. But I think, I think, I think most of us that stick on occasionally remind ourselves, you know, we're, it's pr we're pretty fortunate. Yeah. What is, do you do social media at all? Uh, yeah. I, Instagram, it's in Brandenburg 34. And where's the 34 come from? <laughs> this is so gay. I was, <laughs> <laughs> this, I was, uh, that's my old football number in college. All right. But so as long, it I means something to you. I that's all that matters. I peaked early. I peaked early. Did no, you I, just try, try doing like M Brandenburg? Yeah. See Mark Brandenburg. So it's such a German name, Mark Brandenburg. There's like 4 billion of us probably okay, because fair I think everybody in Berlin's named that. But, uh, and then on, um, if anybody wants to hit me up, I don't give you know, I don't give a shit. Should I give up my email? Is that cool? That's a personal choice. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it out. I, mean, I got <laughs> stand by for I, dick pics. Is that a good idea? Maybe I should rethink about. Michael, this. you're the final vote here. You, Michael, may get a lot Michael? of unwanted. Okay, emails. Yeah, I mean, you guys know your audience. So. <laughs> I feel like this audience probably wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, it seems like probably yeah. mostly mature people. Don't think about it too much. Okay. Like, just what is it? Okay. Don't think about it too much. In Brandenburg, thirty-four, of course. Yeah. At Yahoo, that's all. Yahoo. Yeah. Really sticking with the legacy <laughs> not, platform, huh? I am not, what do you got? I'm, like one gig, off my one lawn. fucking gigabyte of storage get, get on that off my lawn. <laughs> I'm not changing. I'm going until I go Fuck. under, baby. <laughs> Did you upgrade from your MSN.com account for that? Fuck. I'm still. Yeah. My computer's in DOS. Good God. Like, I'll get there. As an author, yes, sir. What is the? Is there a more beneficial way? for people to support you like via one avenue or another to get your book? Is there something that benefits you more than others? Um, shoot. Uh, or is it just, is it a matter and, and of sales? That sales. Matter? Yeah, it's sales. I mean, so if you go on Amazon, you can get it hardcover, softcover, uh, yeah. Kindle. You can also get it on Barnes and Noble's website. You know, it's not, it doesn't have the distribution because it's a small, so you're not going to, you know, you may get it locally in a DC area. And it, and of course, if you have food, everybody on here like buys it and enjoys it. Great beach read. Perfect with a black rifle coffee cup. Um, they'll have a they'll, they'll uh, it'll help a lot, and you'll see more distribution, and they'll do better. But it's, for it's, reviews, you mean? From reviews, um, sales of course, but also reviews and such. But sales mostly. I mean, the more you, the more you put out there, the better. Okay. Um, so you know, I'm I'm just going to keep plugging away and see what happens. And and, and, and I, well, you're already I, working on your second one. I'm working on my second one. It's James Ford still. He's no longer an agent, so we don't. I'll still. Have to, I'll still have to clear it. Hopefully, I'm done with it before I'm done with this job. We'll have to give it a couple of years. We'll see. Well, if, yeah. The, even if you cut your pace in half, you have got two and a half years. Yeah, I'm giving myself two years. Is what I've told myself. So yeah. we'll see what happens. So, but uh, it's been awesome. I appreciate you having me on to do this and get this thing pushed. For sure, man. And it's been great meeting you guys. Finally, but I've watched you guys a long time. So nobody gets to see Michael. Nobody watches him. <laughs> You really, you need to have like a closed confessional over there or something. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> That's not terrible. That's actually not a bad idea at all. Especially if you get like a vintage one, like from an old cathedral or something. Michael, if we got a camera that faced you, would you be willing to wear like a gimp mask all throughout the episodes? <laughs> no. Would you wear, what are those like ones where you go to like the ball? It's like. Oh, a, a masquerade. Yes. Mask. Would oh. you wear one of those? Be, you could switch it up I'd every consider show it. Too. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. we could get really yeah. creative with it. Maybe one wearing? with like the plague doctor mask. Yeah. Like oh, Another yeah. one like a big old. <laughs> that would be, yeah. Yeah. That would be hard Like a big dong. But we can yeah. work that out. Like a big dong <laughs> hanging off of it. <laughs> just teasing you. Yeah, we could do that. Letting your mouth the whole time. Uh. It's just like, it's so close. <laughs> <laughs> He'd over there be just over salivating the entire time. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. 
Uh, I'm willing to put a camera on you, but you have to either wear a masquerade mask. Who's that? There's a uh, country western artist that doesn't. Oh, he gets, yeah, like all of her pack. All of her pack. Would right? you wear that? I can't remember what it looks like. Let me look it up. <laughs> He's actually considering it. Oh fuck I yeah. like. <laughs> Okay, let me look it up. Oh, maybe it's not Oliver Peck. It is all. It's Peck is the last name for sure. Uh, what do you do? The old school he, tassels. I guess he doesn't want to be famous, so he wears like one of those. Uh, it's like a <laughs> yeah. Here mask. it is. Hold on, let me pull it up. It's Orville Peck. Oh, it is Orville Peck. Yeah. Okay, it's still. Is the Peck have to do? Oh, I see. Michael, were you? Would you I'm wear not... the black one? I, uh, <laughs> I don't know which one I would I'm wear. Glad I'm not. I'm, I was not privy to this. I didn't know that Orville Peck was a thing, dude. Is the music good? Michael, uh, it's okay. let's get a camera on you, but you have to wear one of these masks. I don't even want a camera on me in the first place. It won't actually be on you because you're wearing an Orville Peck mask. Please tell me you'll do this. If I mean, I work for you. If you really want me to do this, we can do it. It's not a matter it. of what I want you to do. It's a matter of what I feel like you should want to do. It would be awesome. You don't want to be what famous. I should want to. Dude, no. you don't want to walk down the street and people are like, that's fucking Michael. Yeah. No. You want to be like. You want some privacy. You want him to yeah, be like, exactly. hey, is that Michael? I don't know because I've never seen his face. <laughs> would be awesome too. I mean, if you, if you got sued by Orville Peck. That'd no, be we can buy that shit on the. Like that, it, with the tan cowboy hat, that's yeah. what I want you to look like every episode. <laughs> we'll get you a recliner so you can sit back like that. Or maybe you'd get like a saddle. Yeah. Just sit Ooh, on a saddle. That would be good. That would be badass. Fuck yeah! Or yeah, like a bike over here. Put you on like a bike seat, but yeah. with no like padding on it, just yeah. the pipe. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Your ass is completely numb by the end of the show. <laughs> well, we've gotten completely out of control. Yeah, I want to hear from people whether or not though they feel like you. Come on, dude. Do it for one episode. Will you do Orville Peck? Uh, one episode. Yeah, I'll do it. If people like it, though, would you <laughs> we continue? Have to keep going. I don't know. <laughs> it's a big commitment. Now what? It's a mask. Wearing a mask for two, three hours at a time. I don't know. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it would get hot. It is a long time. I don't know how like, you perform uh, in that. Nothing in this world, Michael, that is easy <laughs> is worth anything. Right? You have to fucking right. bleed for this. No, yeah, for sure. I don't like your level of like not being committed at all. Well, yeah. It's a little disappointing. <laughs> I, I'm I committed. More when I, came I got here. a bunch of flights tomorrow. Flew, I'm ordering flew, so I, many of these I flew masks. I fucking DC, and if I flew, for, that would be a real treat. Yeah, you'd only put like you could meet the guest with it off, but then you'd put it on for the show. Right. <laughs> well, we'll I'll consider it. I'll All get right. back to. Should you we on start that one. with a masquerade mask so it's not like that weird? Uh, I mean, we can do that. If you order the masks, I'll pick and choose. Fuck yes. All right, Hell I got to yeah. figure out a camera solution there. That's. Perfect for you. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> just, just I don't always... think we have three cameras. We do. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, don't worry. I'll figure out the text. You can solution. have your own, like literally your own website where it's just on him. There's so no amount watch, of money that watch, will stand between watch, me and this goal. You can watch Cleared Hot Podcast on <laughs> yeah. like say your TV, but you can go on. You can Live like, streaming. It's just, just my just face. You. Yeah. just you the whole time. He's idea. in control. He has the buttons there with his left hand. He can pick what <laughs> choose whatever he wants. The camera will never be on me. It has to be a little bit. Otherwise, what's the purpose of the mask? <laughs> People won't see my face anyways. So if the camera's never on me, it doesn't matter. It does Because matter. the mask is we on. We just don't have the camera set up yeah. now. But if we had a mask, no amount of money would keep me from getting that camera to film you with the mask. Yeah. You have fuck you money, so to speak. No, but I would find it to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing it. We'll consider it. That could be Michael right now. Nobody okay, knows because it's never on your face. I feel blessed. I just feel awesome to be on the ground level. Of this. You were here when we yeah, actually, that's, yeah, I've been it's... thinking like, what can we do to take the podcast to the next level? And yeah. we've actually just determined. It just, all well, it took was, all you had to do was get a secret service agent in, in here and yeah. grill him about yeah. the Kennedy assassination. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and and here we are somehow <laughs> two hours later. See the bot, the one in the black where you can see his chin. That's where he just takes the mask, or the little tassels and goes over his ears with Very him. Batman. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, gimpy. Yeah, maybe. Gimpy. We'll see. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, I'm so pumped. I'm Michael. <laughs> Summer 2023 is going to be a vibe in here. It's going to be so amazing. <laughs> I cannot wait. You know who's going to be so mad at me about this? Leah. Yep. 
Yep. And she'd be like, why the fuck would you make him do that? I'm like, I didn't make him do shit. He put the mask on himself. <laughs> put, yeah. <laughs> Under threat of firing. <sighs> I got nothing else. That's a great ending That's to great an episode. Ending too. That was, that That's what everybody has to look forward we can't, to. We can't top that. That's we a can't. good. That's a good crescendo. Well, hell yeah, man! Thank you for making the time to come oh, out. I Appreciate it. it. Thanks, brother. Yep.